You better be listening to Slezoids or I must break you. He is a tough man. I wouldn't need to take a chance. So you know our secret. He has to be killed. Six foot six of half breed fury. But he's got a little yeah. problem. He has a hard time making friends. You tell that bitch who sent you here. How sorry I am, I can no longer be her friend. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Sleezoids, the podcast where we go down the rabbit hole of 20th century genre fare from the most influential canon classics to the trashiest exploitation films we can get our hands on and invite you to tag along in helping us create a canon of sleaze. Each week is a double feature grindhouse style where we discuss two films loosely related by subject, genre, actor, filmmaker, or franchise, and at the end of each episode, along with our honorary Sleezoids, which you can become by subscribing on Patreon. Next week, we are doing yet another uh, patron-nominated double feature that didn't quite get the victory, but was so good we had to do it anyway. So if you want some of that glorious power, join the sleaze. That's right. We decide on all the official ratings for every, and rankings for every film that we cover as well. Patreon subscribers also get an honor shout-out and two bonus episodes every single month, which we have been doing for five or six years. I don't know how many years, a bunch of them. We have like 150-plus uh, bonus episodes as well as our bonus transmission series where we talk about new release um, genre films. So if you haven't made the jump yet, we recommend doing that over at patreon.com slash Podcast. And speaking of which, yeah. we did have quite a few people make the jump this week. Um, we had Steve blank actually sign up at the ten dollar a month tier joining us for the monthly virtual screening that we try to do on the last thursday of any given month and kind of tie it into maybe the last episode of the month um we nice. had andy bolton sign up at five dollars uh timothys uh ashton bell uh sid c who signed up for an entire year of the show uh, for anyone interested, there is an annual tier. You get a little bit of a discounted monthly rate if you do that. We had uh, Kane sign up, Tim Vigors, uh, Mark Barone, Ian McKinney, uh, Simon Walsh, Roman, um, uh, Beloved, Jordan uh, Gurner. Actually, Beloved also signed up for an entire year of the show. So, damn, we had a lot of people going for the annual tier. Uh, we had yeah, Ryan thanks, W. We had Zach Bronson, John Holden, Bacon Wheats, David James, um, Ben T under the floorboard and last but not least Primrose Path. So thanks so much to all of you folks for signing up. Hope you're enjoying those bonus episodes. We very much appreciate the support. Yeah, thank you very much. That's the uh, one plug for the week. The other plug, as always, is Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you are listening on either one of those platforms and I can see the stats, I can see you right now listening on both those platforms. Give us a good old rating and a review over there. It helps us climb the ranks and uh, find new listeners. And the last plug, as always, is merch. If you like the poster art that Based Out of Toronto horror artist Trevor Henderson did for our show, you can get that put on basically anything that you can think of. And you freaks thought of a lot of stuff. You've gotten pillows, notebooks, coffee mugs, hoodies. If you're interested in any of that, that is at the link in the description of this episode, as well as over at sleezoidspodcast.com. But that is it for the intro. Welcome back to another week. As always, I am your host, Josh Lewis. And joining me also, as always, my co-host, Jamie Miller, welcome back, everybody. Welcome. I believe two weeks ago would have been the last time you folks over here on the main feed would have heard from us, where we would have had special first-time guest writer-director Ben David Grabinski, uh, also co-creator of the recent Scott Pilgrim Takes Off animated miniseries over on Netflix. For anyone who was interested, it's very good. Yeah, uh, awesome. We had Ben David on to discuss two of our favorite directors going gory 80s sword and sorcery fantasy mode. We talked about the passionate and resourceful B-movie maestro himself. Albert Pune with The Sword and the Sorcerer from 1982. And we also got to talk about the uh, god of the surreal Italian horror film, Lucio <laughs> Fulci, uh, with his 1983 film, Conquest, which was a movie that truly does feel like if John Borman's Excalibur was like laser beamed into one of his like surreal nightmare sequences from the Gates of Hell trilogy, including all the gore. Yeah, it's got all the disgusting, grotesque violence that you want from a Fulci film, but just put into this kind of fantasy uh, genre. It, it is a lot of fun to watch. And also, both films 
um, have two of the coolest weapons that you've ever seen in a fantasy film, which is like a mm. laser bow and arrow and a triple <laughs> broadsword that projectiles outward so that it stabs people from a distance. It's great. It's awesome. It's true. So if you haven't heard that episode, that was uh, two weeks ago over on the main feed. Go back and check it out. Go back and check out those uh, movies as well. They were a lot of fun. Um, and then last week over on the Patreon, though, we, we switched it up and we did your patron voted episode, which, you know, if anyone who's over on the Patreon knows this already once every two months, we let you guys nominate and vote on the episode you want to hear us talk about the most. We actually currently have that polk running right now, and there's already some some big ones in competition. But the last one to win that poll was a double feature of stylishly cool neo-noirs about modern for-hire contract killers who ritualistically live by like their own version of an ancient strict samurai code. That double feature was Jean-Pierre Melville's very influential, very lonely French procedural film, Le Samurai, from 1967. And the pairing was Jim Jarmusch's offbeat, sort of like New Jersey street remix uh, of that same film, Ghost Dog, The Way of the samurai from 1999 which is a movie that somehow manages to be like kind of meditative and mystical and a fun hangout movie but it also has forrest whitaker like whipping out his silenced pistols and whooshing them around like katanas it's pretty sick yes it's awesome just a just a double feature of two guys two of the coolest guys you've ever seen walking around it's yep it's great <laughs> that's what a movie's just always should have been we've strayed so Agreed. far <laughs> <laughs> But if you haven't heard that episode, once again, patreon.com slash podcast. That was over on the bonus feed last week. But moving on to this week, we have a very special uh, returning guest joining us. He is a graphic designer. He is a writer. He's an editor, a musician, and of course, uh, the programmer of the wonderful martial arts film screening series here in Toronto known as Black Belt Cinema. That guest is Brandon Lim. Brandon, how you doing? Fellas, thanks for having me back. Dude, Welcome we had back. to. We had such a Doing fun time good. with you last time. <laughs> I really wanted to redeem myself for the poor, piss poor audio I had last time. I, <laughs> I was using a new mic that a friend gave me. He was like, yo, this mic is sick. You're going to love it. You are not Entire episode. I had the mic uh, turned in the wrong direction. Oh. <laughs> so that's why I sounded so muffled. So I've thrown that mic in the trash. Uh, it's gone forever. <laughs> Um, I'm using just like a Shure 57 now, and I, I hope you guys can can hear my voice uh, clearly. You sound concisely. beautiful. It sounds like just when I'm sitting next to you at the review watching a movie, and you're saying something <laughs> ridiculous into my ear. For and some you're reason. like, dude, could you shut up and let yeah. me watch the movie, please? Jeez. Like, yeah. So sorry, sorry about that, Josh. It's nice it's to wonderful. talk to you not during a movie. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fun. It's it's wonderful. We're here to talk about movies. And last time we had you on, actually, we had you on for a very special episode where we were wrapping up mm -hmm. January, our specialty themed genre. month on the films of Jean-Claude Van Damme, where we talked about sort of the end of his theatrical career we did. I think it was Ringo Lamb's Maximum Risk and Choi Hark's Knockoff. Um, but that was one where we just kind of invited you on the episode. We were like, we're going to do this episode anyway, and we just kind of really want to borrow your expertise and your knowledge of this kind of genre, because I've gone to a few of Brandon's screenings, and he knows a lot about this kind of stuff. But I knew when I was like, we're going to have Brandon on again. But we want to at least talk about at least one movie that he's actually picking. And in this case, uh, actually programming for people to come and see in a theater. And I was kind of like bugging Brand Every time I saw him, I was like, dude, what's your slate for next year? I want to like we want to help promote yeah. something like tell us tell us what's going on. So that's that's how this episode was sparked. So what's the movie that's having its 50th anniversary this year that you're screening this month for anyone who lives in Toronto to and come and check out? And what's the movie that just kind of made the most sense to pair with it, which is how I think we came up with this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was kind of almost the only other movie to pair with it, but we we chose Sister Street Fighter, uh, also from 1974. It is its 50th anniversary, and that's screening at the Review Cinema uh, Friday, February 16th at 9.30 p.m. Uh, tickets are on sale now. You can just get them from... Go Review check Cinema. it out, and that's the new today. restoration, right? That looks, like, way better than what was previously available for that. Yeah, I, I believe it. I, I, I think it might be the same transfer that uh, was released on the Arrow video uh, box set, so it's it's definitely a 2K, I think, maybe no, I think it's a 4K restoration, so I, I've, it, I've seen a cut of it, it looks absolutely gorgeous, uh, the colors are super vibrant and saturated, with that nice, beautiful grain that's like, you know, it's not like one of those ugly, 
like uh, 4K upscaled ones where they just smooth everything over yep. and make it look mm-hmm. like awful CG. It We're looking at you, like, James Cameron. You know, come on, dude. Yeah, come on. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's screening next month, and I I mean the reason I didn't screen the Street Fighter is because I I screened that at review I think in September of 2022, uh, which was probably one of the most entertaining uh, screenings I think that year. Like the audience was just just so into it and some of the reactions the audience was giving were really surprising like everyone i mean we can talk about this when we get into the film but people really connected with like sunny chiba's facial expressions <laughs> yes like hell yeah his, me, too. Oh, me too i feel those people you know, <laughs> we, can, we can unpack that later during the film but that that was just kind of like a big takeaway from the film was just his crazy contorted intense like just ugh, expressions they just really leap off the screen mm-hmm. absolutely uh, Oh yeah. So, so that, that, that's just it. Is Brandon was I saw Brandon was screening Sister Street Fighter, which came out in 1974, and it's definitely more underseen, and people should be going to uh, to to check it out. But it was having its 50th anniversary, and also having its 50th anniversary was the Street Fighter, which also came out in 1974. So I was just like, okay, Brandon, this makes sense. We got to do this. We've got to talk about it. Jamie and I had already both seen the Street Fighter. We actually did it as one of our mm-hmm. virtual screenings early on in the show. Oh no way! And it, and it okay, had cool. such a great reaction, even just with like a bunch of us in one of our virtual screenings that was how jamie and i watched it for the first time and we were like yeah. wow what a what a, what a movie and what a performance from from sunny chiba so yeah i'm very excited to uh be talking about uh both of these today but that being said i think we are gonna uh, jump uh, right into it here so let's kick things off let's start it off with the street fighter <laughs> beat a man, they call you tough. You beat an army, they call you the Street Fighter. Introducing the incredible Sonny Chiba. You don't know what mean is until you meet it. Trailer's him. something like Terry Seguri, six foot six of yeah. Street Fury. <laughs> so He's got a hard time making friends. Like, whoa, who is this guy? He's definitely not six foot six, but he apparently... It, it's that energy, that, though. He's got that six foot six energy, you know, like and it's funny, too, because his character is, is so close to the ground in this. He's always crouching and and crawling and has this very low center of gravity. But oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to see if Jamie in. can can throw that in there. See if see if the Brandon's audio matches up to that trailer. <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, going to like fade it. him in as the music is. Exactly. Swelling, you know, let's do it. Look at a little behind the scenes action for the audience this week. But yeah, let's jump into <laughs> it. Uh, I love it. Uh, Everyone, we are talking The Street Fighter, the 1974 Japanese crime martial arts action film directed by uh, Shikihiro Ozawa, written by Koji Jakata, uh, Motohiro Tori, and starring Sonny Chiba as the titular Street Fighter uh, Takuma Sakuri, uh, the hyper-violent karate expert who was asked to kidnap a uh, wealthy heiress of an oil tycoon, played by uh, Yotuka Nakajima, uh, on behalf of an evil conglomerate made up of, uh, we'll get into it, various Yakuza and Hong Kong criminals and corrupt government officials, possibly, and some some rival oil tycoons. And uh, he decides to instead kind of uh, protect her in his own uh, it, bad guy animalistic way, which we'll talk about. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is our first time talking about the director, uh, Shigehiro Ozawa, uh, who was a veteran of the Tao company as early as the 1950s, making over, I think it was, I think I looked this up, it was like 100 Japanese noirs and samurai pictures before landing this film. Um, in Jeez. 1974, which is like it's it, and and its sequels um, that would become the movies he was most well known for. But we've talked about the Tao Company before as well. One of the most prolific B movie and television producers in Japan, who are more famous now for like sort of like Shin Kamen Rider and Power Rangers and a few of the animes they produced, like Dragon Ball Z, than probably anything else in the 1970s. But they really did explode in the 70s, especially stateside, uh, with their specific brand of like 
merging gritty, stylish, like cheap 70s sort of like crime exploitation movies um, mm-hmm. with more um, sort of martial arts films, especially in action films. But they did things like the Battles Without Honor and Humanity, sort of Yakuza thriller series that popularized Battle Royale director Kinji Fukusaku, uh, as well as uh, we've talked about the female prisoner Scorpion, uh, women in prison revenge series starring oh, legendary good. Lady Snowblood herself, Maiko uh, Kaji, which is just phenomenal i still love that first movie so much yeah me too it's a uh, huge fan it, of that series yeah yeah it's it's incredible it's a complete masterwork the colors and just the expression it's it's an amazing action some film. of the sets unbelievable um yeah this set but, the set designs are unreal like they're so mm-hmm. surreal avant-garde just full of like psychedelic like bava-esque lighting and yep. almost like I, there's so many amazing moments where like you know you see her she's like sprawled out on a floor but it's like this crazy like glass floor and you're seeing the shot of her from underneath and yeah. it's just it's really experimental i, I, and, and I very, always think about yeah. the uh like the the in-camera sort of inset transitions they'll do too where they'll like flip a stage around and be like now we're it's in a, a cool. different part of the room or we're in a different yeah, we're yeah. in a dream yeah. now and i'm like what the fuck is going on <laughs> yeah it's yes. almost like a stage play when the set is just rotating around to something else it's it's so brilliant yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there was there was a lot of visual ingenuity being done by these guys at the Tau Company um, in, in the 70s. But among their most popular uh, series, especially at the stateside box office, when it was co-distributed by New Line Cinema, uh, who at the time would have just also put out Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974 and would eventually make their name on, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, Lord of the Rings, movies you've probably heard of. Um, <laughs> they, they were the ones who released Street Fighter. Um, which turned an actual sort of black belt karate judo kendo instructor uh, turned uh, TV and film actor uh, Shinichi Chiba or known as stateside Sunny Chiba who has already been a star I want to say for like he'd been working with the Tao company since like the early 60s or something so he was already was, basically a star yeah it was incredible when I started looking uh up his his page and half of it and probably even three quarters of it is just the long list of projects that he's done um, and it's just unbelievable how many things that he was in before he was even known, but then after as well. But yeah, he's just a, an absolute legend. No, uh, yeah, he was in some really fun uh, early films, like some black and white uh, sort of like kind of creature feature type films. One, what, one is called like the Golden Bat or something like that. Uh, there's one with like this crazy underwater monster. Like those are those are worth checking. I'm just trying to find the titles of them. And like uh, Cinecycle actually. Uh, Trash Palace. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to one of those screens. I have. They, they play a lot yeah, of fun, they, janky 16 millimeter prints. It's a, a blast. lot of janky 16 millimeter <laughs> prints. Uh, they, they showed this one Sonny Chiba movie. I'm just trying to remember. I think it's uh, something Legend of the Golden Bat, something mm. like that. They showed that on 16 millimeter. It was absolutely incredible. Totally bonkers. Yeah, if, if, if anyone lives in Toronto and hasn't been to a uh, Cinecycle Trash Palace uh, screening, they, they can be a lot of fun. I, I heard a, a, an inaudible print of a stakeout on Dope Street, which was like this like bizarre like anti-drug PSA noir from 1958 directed by the Empire Strikes Back director Irvin Kershner. <laughs> That's the oh, kind yeah. of movie that they play there. <laughs> it's wonderful. Oh, That's awesome. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like Sonny Chiba had been making, you know, quite a lot of, um, crime films and even as brain was saying, like sci-fi films and just and any kind of genre film that was, you know, making any kind of, uh, money over in Japan. Uh, he, he was cashing in on that, uh, in, in the B movie world. Um, and the street fighter just exploded onto the scene, especially if you were someone who was already maybe paying attention to, um, you know, sort of like seventies import martial arts films or, or mm-hmm. crime movies like a little baby Quentin Tarantino maybe who you know <laughs> I think a lot of people know Sonny Chiba uh, from being Hattori Hanzo in his Kill Bill movies which is you know uh, you know c- c- kind of makes sense but um, he he had a very interesting career where he was like a guy who was like training to be in the Olympics uh, and then he got into television and you know and, and, and then his 1970s were just um, massive and you can see almost directly in this film honestly the dude holds the screen 
with all of his confident flexing and like angry bug eyed, like expressive mugging that he does and his primal battle cries that are just like not unlike what people liked about, you know, Bruce Lee's shonen totally. heavy fights, like the way that Chiba like hisses and grimaces. And Brandon was just mentioning it uh, uh, to us earlier, like the way he contorts his face, the way that he, you know, the way that he breathes or uses his eyebrows, the way he eats an apple in this movie is um, yeah, mesmerizing. It's intense. <laughs> I, have you know? this, uh, I have this theory that this character, I mean, Sonny Jiba doesn't necessarily do this in every film, but Terry Seguri in particular, he's got this like clinching state of like, it's almost like he's edging. You know, he's like constantly, <laughs> he's, con he's constantly in a state of almost coming. And that's where his power is being derived from. You know, it's because he's, he has this, we could like, learn from this man. We could learn things. We could learn I think. from this man. Yeah, he's not quite <laughs> Schwarzenegger and pumping iron. He's not quite there, but he's just he's on the cusp, so he can carry that energy. But there's yeah. a there's a sadistic quality to his his character where he's like almost like enjoying inflicting yes. all this pain. Oh yeah, and, so and, important and, and 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 damage on people. Like he's relishing it. There's mm -hmm. almost like this this evil sly smile and and his eyes like the, it's just like I I just love how he's just unapologetically the bad guy of this film, but yeah. also the hero, like it's incredible. Yeah. He has this energy about him that, um, it's like you can, you can actually actively see the other performers as, as he's approaching them with his like weird body language and animalistic sounds like that. You see them be scared and They're kind of so be nervous. scared of him. Yeah. And <laughs> just he, slowly and you, creeping around him. Oh totally. And you see him just, like you said, just enjoy it th thoroughly. He actually kind of has smirks on his face every once in a while before he's about to punch somebody. Cause he just knows he's going to have the upper hand. He's got a lot of confidence as an action, uh, anti-hero i guess uh, but but yeah it's 100 oh, um, he's he's yeah. he's practically he he relishes in, in fact like being evil or being the villain but being <laughs> but, but but also you know potentially being used as like a, he basically views himself as like a a, a a tool of violent power and you know yeah. that can be used for good things or it can be used for bad things and you know he just he's kind of uh neutral in in yeah. in his, that regard which is a really interesting position to come from because you can tell that i i, I mean around i think it was 1970 72 or 73, uh, Sonny Chiba was actually trying to get a movie made co-starring Bruce Lee at the time that he was, uh, he was in <laughs> oh, conversation with him. You know, he was, he was trying to, to make that work. And then obviously Bruce tragically, um, passed and enter the dragon obviously became such a huge international success. And the Tao company, from what I understand, this was meant to be their response to that. This was greenlit in the wake of that being the success that it was. And they were like, dude, we can get Western audiences interested. And so you, you can tell a little bit of like Sonny Chiba's trying to they were like I'm an American audience has only seen enter the dragon so like mm -hmm. here's another movie that you can kind of watch where you have this guy doing some similar maneuvers making his way through a sort of like criminal conspiracy movie you know some other things that would be familiar to a sort of western audience but the thing that I found so interesting about this because it is a really good merging of stylistically the Yakuza sort of neo-noir in a martial arts film um, but it's so stripped down to just like kind of like this just pure the pure gross factor of both both genres where it's like how do we communicate in the most blunt and kind of <laughs> brutal sort of like bodily harm fashion and Chiba extends to that with his own character by playing such like it's such a, a less honorable more yes. gleefully ugly and sadistic sort of for hire warrior than Bruce Lee would have ever like wanted to to, to play because we'll get into it but he does things yeah. in this film including selling people into sex slavery he beats the shit out of people just to kind of prove that he can he rips various parts of people's bodies out of them and then smells his fingers because he thinks it's hilarious and like yeah, open, it's just <laughs> open and threatens innocent people to put himself in a situation that he has the upper hand in or he gets an opportunity that he's looking for like he's very willing to be the bad guy um, to I guess enact what he thinks is the and also get off the on it, as Brandon him. was saying, too, right? Well, there's so. that scene when, um, you know, uh, Etsuko Shiomi's character, there's these two siblings that are, you know, hiring Terry to break out their other brother who's in jail for, I don't know, if he killed someone in a karate fight or something like that. And, you know, when he finds out they can't pay, he basically grabs the sister, sexually assaults her with, like, just rubs, just smooches his lips all over her face and then is, threatens to... Uh, sell her into sexual slavery to pay off the debt. And you're like, whoa, that escalated really fast. You know, yeah. it's like, damn. 
Men this guy was dressed the, like a Buddhist monk like th- three minutes ago. <laughs> right. Yeah. Clearly, clearly that was uh, yeah not not a reflection of his his character. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. It's it's all it's all things that seem to be for his own benefit and opportunity a lot of the time. Um, uh, like even when it comes to getting uh, uh, when, when he's getting into this more you know the the more violent situations in the in later on in the film. Um, he very much is still just defending himself a lot of the time. He he, he is a yeah. more it's it's wild how selfish of a character he is. Even though like in the comparisons I was always making were with uh, Bruce Lee, just more I guess physically because Bruce Lee had that thing where he was kind of a a hero. I can't remember a lot of moments where he was playing a like a, a very super anti-hero or something like that. No, he, um, he, he liked he, to have a moral philosophy that he also instructed. Yeah. Oh, for sure. He on, was standing up you know? for like work, you know, uh, was it yes. uh, fist <laughs> of fury standing up for the workers at this, you know, the, uh, factory that they work in and, you know, in the Chinese connection, he's taking on the Japanese and, and, you know, defending his, his classmates and teacher and all this stuff. So that, yeah. I mean, that's part of why he was so popular at that time. Cause it just, there was a lot of civil unrest in, in Hong Kong at that time too. There was a lot of protests on the street over, you know, unfair labor practices and, and working conditions. And people just really rallied behind this, this character who kind of just played this, like, you know, average Joe working at this, like, uh, you know, what was it like at like ice factory or something like that. And mm-hmm. just a fury. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think people, you know, people were just getting out of the chair. There was like standing ovations. People were getting out of their, chairs and cheering at the end of these Bruce Lee movies, you know, it's incredible. Yeah. So yeah. Sonny Chiba was and like, was, how do we fuck with that? How do we make how do people we, cheer me on, but I do the most like disgusting things you've ever seen, but it's kind of it cool, honestly, you know, like, it would have been really <laughs> interesting to watch their, their film. They might've done together just to have both of these energies on screen. You would have had both of them kind of doing the slightly contorted faces and the noises, but obviously with, with Shiba, it would be way more over the top and blunt and with Bruce Lee, it'd be more controlled yeah. and probably, uh, and character wise, he'd probably be There's a more grace to him. Man. Bruce, yeah. It's yeah. also like yeah. indicative of the, the, the difference between, you know, karate or Japanese martial arts and Chinese kung fu is mm-hmm. you know, someone like Bruce Lee, there's, uh, there's a flow and a, a gracefulness to it. There's like, you know, you're flowing like water. And it's, it's, uh, you know, a completely different style. Whereas Japanese karate, especially like something like Kyokushin karate, it's a very hard, strong style, Mm -hmm. you know, like I've heard somebody describe it. I think even Bruce Lee described the difference between karate and Kung Fu. Whereas Kung Fu is like, imagine swinging, uh, like a ball and chain, uh, you know, uh, where you're, you're building momentum and striking. Whereas karate Mm -hmm. is like swinging like an iron bar and like hitting something with a very (laughs) long stick that's that's kind of almost like the difference you know it's it's yeah yeah. style versus soft like i mean you can you can you can you can tell that in like the first bit of action which is in that you know which is one of the weirder sort of elaborate sort of like prison escape sequences i've ever seen that that opens up the movie where such a weird amazing intro because you're just dropped into this and you're like what is going on this guy's in prison Uh, yeah it's 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 great or where you know we're, we're, we're introduced to him as this four hire martial artist and and kidnapper um uh who who breaks he's a karate uh, man he's a karate man sir a mean bastard from okinawa that's right <laughs> that's yeah that's how they I, I watched the english dub earlier the last time i saw it was with the subtitles okay yeah i was i was watching the uh the, the subtitled version but i do know that uh t- t- if, if we're ever saying takuma saguri or terry saguri we're talking about the oh, same right, guy right yeah i can't yeah. talk terry yeah. is who i you know the same yeah that's who i know him as terry Sigari. i might be saying terry every once in a while for sure that's right <laughs> I do but, have to say the English the English dub for these films are, are actually pretty good because it's not yeah. it's different than like the same I used to think it was like a British the same British voice actors but apparently there were maybe New Zealand or Kiwi uh, voice actors that did a lot of the old like Shaw Brothers like like kung fu stuff okay mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know, different set of voice actors. I, I I quite like the the English voice actor that does uh, Sonny Chiba's character. I'm not sure his name, but it it kind of suits the character. Yeah, yeah. I to- I totally agree. Yeah, but we're we're introduced to him breaking out as uh, Brandon was saying this this other karate man um, Shikambaru, played by Masashi uh, Ishibashi, uh, who was uh, uh, convicted of killing, from what I could tell, uh, seven men in a dojo competition. And there's this very telling line he has about that, about like karate being a kid's game now, where he's like, you know, whereas you know it used to be kill or be killed. You know, karate guys used to just fucking used to be able to just other. kill seven people in a dojo, and it wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, <laughs> fucking woke, gone soft. woke police. Now I'm in what prison. In woke this karate, <laughs> get it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so, so he's obviously he's he's been paid by the brother 
brother and sister to go and free him before he is executed. But he does so by disguising disguising himself as a prominent Buddhist monk who can get into his cell under the guise of giving him like, I guess, like his final prayers or, 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 or rights. Um, and, and he gets into a brief sort of like spaghetti Western sort of like eye close up sort of like locked lo- lockdown where the two men kind of figure out what what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And he gets him alone and he immediately kicks off this like slow motion fight with him that is really just about extending pure power like just yeah. overpowering another person is the main it's not like a, a very intensely choreographed it's not even very artfully choreographed it's like yeah, it's not how like can Sonny Chiba page. punch another guy so hard in the back <laughs> of the head or spinal cord that he gives him delayed asphyxia so that he will <laughs> Yes, so that he will naturally collapse on his way to the hanging rope, which is a great image right in, 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 in the first place. Hung, like, yes. <laughs> right when he's about to be hung. Just very, just so perfectly timed. Yeah, that's the big difference, I think, when it comes to something like what we've discussed before, like Jackie Chan, for instance, that feels very, it's very fast paced and it feels it's like, like it's almost dancing. Um, it's often often sped up to like, sure. like 24 to 23 frames or something, or I can't remember how many, but. Yeah, it's it's like literally sped up. It's crazy to see this use of slow mo because it's it's so mesmerizing. Espe- yeah, not- especially using the slow mo in choreography that isn't it is kind of power um, dominant to begin with. So the speed isn't already there to slow down, so you can see a few more like extra movements or something like that. It's really just like you said, Josh, just to accent the power. It's just to make it as blunt as possible. And then so when you have moments like you know. So, you know, someone actually gets uh, knocked out d- literally 10 minutes later because of the gut punch that he took or he <laughs> just instantly vomits because of a gut punch or something like that. It just feels so visceral and powerful, even though it's so slowed down compared to some of the other stuff we've seen. And there's only really an exchange of like maybe two or three attacks and, and blocks and parries. You know, there's not mm-hmm. like um, it's, you know, most. Hong Kong fights or Kung Fu fights. It's just so fast. There's just an insane amount of punches and kicks and movements. This is so like direct and it's all happening within this, you know, contained, like they're in like the jail cell, right? So it's not like they can just jump around and and fight this crazy graceful fight. Like it happens so quickly, but so slowly at the same time. It's amazing. Yeah. A lot of the things in here, like the choreography is kind of compact, like within a very closed in room or something like that. Um, and because of, of Shiva's like, like we've been talking about his, his, uh, his, his, um, demeanor and his, his physical prowess and all his like contorting facial expressions and his noises that he makes, he's just already kind of expressing that power that he's channeling. So, um, you, you, you believe that he's beating like three guys with just three punches. <laughs> it totally works for you. Um, it's Every great. punch just causes so much pain and damage like he's really hurting these guys yeah it's, it's really oh yeah <laughs> it's awesome i mean it's almost yeah. like if you, i mean whenever you see like clips of like you know these karate masters breaking like bricks and boards mm-hmm. like just imagine inflicting that on a human body and that's that's basically <laughs> what you're seeing at play in this film yeah i mean that they, I, I do love that they include yeah. shots of the jojo in here just to like give you that idea on like what these guys are doing you know like yeah, where how they're just breaking these through the, the sort of like stone plates that they're doing because you know they, they want to signify that like this is the way that this is how he moves through the world like yeah he has a little bit of brains and he's willing to do this plan where he's gonna you know get him taken to the hospital so that you know they're gonna nurse him back to health i guess before before killing him just i guess that's legally or ethically what they have to do um and uh the the loophole they catch him on yeah so then shiba can then break him out of the less heavily guarded ambulance instead of having to go through through the prison which he does with the help of his uh trusty sidekick rakuda um (laughs) who's like a uh, not only sort of guy yeah it it not only helps him on his mission but also cooks for him helps him work out washes his underwear uh, does all kinds of stuff they have an adorable the, friendship. It's a bit of a buddy say. movie, you know. <laughs> yeah, a little domestic relationship almost. It's it's kind of cute yeah. when they 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 go from like that kind of violence to cutting back to them in the apartment eating chicken and watching the oh news my. together and shit. You know, so funny. Everyone could use a homie like that. I feel like you know. Hell yeah, absolutely. It, it helps yeah. balance out uh, Chiba's character a lot from just the. It, yeah, you know, yeah. I yeah. mean, every you once in a while, a y- you need someone to pull him back when he, you know, <laughs> when he is like killing the brother by letting him leap out of the window and fall to his own gruesome death or sexually assaulting <laughs> the sister and selling her into yeah. sex slavery. You're like, you kind of need yeah. like a little guy to be like, hey, man, I don't know. You know, <laughs> yeah. 
that I have to say though, because we were already talking about that one of the first scenes where he's um that they can't pay him, so he fights them. And uh, when he leapt through the window that first time I watched it, I was just so shocked. It was the last thing I saw coming. It's and, so... and the shot of him like blood, like the red paint <laughs> oh, blood all so over the much, sidewalk. <laughs> all over the sidewalk. It's quite, uh, yeah, it was quite stark. You know, I felt, it, it, and then the sister comes out and sees and screams. You're just like, oh, geez. It's just horrible. Yeah. 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 And then it just kind of cuts away too. Like it's just like that's like he 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 dealt with that this situation is the, the, the way he well, normally does. Well, yeah, this does. is just this is a transaction. <laughs> like, yeah, you for better him. you better leave now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like holy yeah. shit. <laughs> like 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 he immediately goes to his his contact uh, Mudaguchi, who refers to him literally as the meanest guy I ever met, but also the guy <laughs> who makes the impossible Terry, I'm possible. I'm sure you're the meanest guy in the world. Yes, in, 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 in terms of just his skill type at these types of, of jobs, which is what results in kind of like the main sort of motivating aspect of the plot, which is that he's offered, you know, but from some Hong Kong mafia investors of, of his partner or of someone that he, he sells women to, I guess, in his spare time, uh, offers to uh, kidnap this now incredibly valuable heiress daughter beneficiary, uh, Sare, of a, a billion dollar oil tycoon who we see on a news broadcast has recently died of like the sudden stroke and who is, you know, very heavily protected by her karate master uncle, uh, Kendo, uh, Mosako, uh, played by, uh, Masafumi Suzuki. Um, and it's, it's a job that he like at first, like, well, I guess he in general just refuses, but I, I do like that he refuses, but he kind of goes, but I also follow an evil code of conduct by the way, you know? So mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to tell anyone about this job. I'm just not going to do it. Cause I don't want to work with you people. I don't trust you people. I'm a, you know, it's a bit of a lone wolf type character yeah. but that pisses them off so much that they send dudes to kill him and they do so while he's working out which is just a mistake the dude's already angry you know he's already in <laughs> yeah. the zone a little bit and he's literally he, working out in his home gym when they, yes so he's, he's, he's already warmed on. up he's yeah. already warmed up yeah yeah he's got the belt on he's <laughs> warmed up and ready to go they picked like the worst time to like ambush him yeah it's yep. just like those muscles are filled with blood just ready to fucking go and he boy. is flexing and the way and, and i mean this is one of those it's a 70s film so it's it's the style is a lot of close-ups a lot of zooms a lot of canted angles a lot of sort of long lens anamorphic photography and it's so wonderful to see such like what otherwise you see in like a sort of a naturalistic kind of like new hollywood movie <laughs> And in yeah. this case, you just have Sonny Chiba in the middle of the room, just like flexing as hard as he can and getting ready to just like, you know, in, in the case of um, this scene, uh, he's going to punch a dude so hard in the jaw that all of his teeth shatter and fall out and he just starts gushing blood out of out of his mouth and there's something <laughs> so cool to me about seeing like such ridiculous and gory um you know sort of like conceived choreography like that but done in this you know the, the kind of uh style and the sort of like relentless sort of forward momentum pace that you kind of associate more with a little bit more of a realistic film yeah yeah, he delivers I'm, that amazing line. Uh, I, mean, I probably shouldn't say the B word, but he's like, "You tell that bitch who sent you." <laughs> oh, sorry, and we can no longer be friends. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so hilarious that it's like we can no longer be friends, and and it still feels like the most powerful statement ever made by a yeah. man. Um, you know, what's a little strange too, and I like it. It's very seventies. Um, just speaking on kind of like. The, the effects and you know the way that they use the zooms the blood splatter that kind of stuff the the score itself is also very oh sad. it's so it's got like this funky big it's so good funk jazz thing and it's it's fusing a bunch of different uh, instruments that you have in each of those genres and it it really works and it's Dude, it's, uh, it's that classic uh wicka wicka like yeah, uh, electric like guitar riffing that's from that yeah. like the isaac hayes playbook like circa like shaft or totally. like truck turner or something like that it's awesome his yeah. theme song is catchy. Like it comes on whenever you know he's really getting into it with the the henchman. You know, it's like da, whenever he gets into a great da, moment. Da, yeah. Da, 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 when, when when they need to sell that through pure fury and intensity, he's gonna like get back up and beat the shit out of the guy who just like kind of fucked him up a little bit. That's the song that uh, kicks in. The rest of the movie is entirely scored, which I love, to just literally the sounds of the nasty violence and like the sound design of him like gouging an eye out and someone screaming. That's what most of the score of this movie is. Yeah, and then every once in a while, it's like sick electric guitar riff kicks yeah. in. 
<laughs> it's so oh my god it just gets you stoked I, it is amazing how many you know just insanely intense close-ups there are of shiba uh, chiba just doing the most insane movement with his with his mouth just after he like i'm just watching it right now because it's on tubi and he just set up that punch where he knocks the guy's teeth out and they unpurposely do it where he like sets it up right where his where his mouth is then pulls back and hits him and then they cut to his face and he's doing like a contorted face just drawing in all that power um yeah but they, yeah. they want to hone in on that ruthless like inevitability like it's like this guy's yeah. gonna do this thing you can kind of tell what he's about to do and it's like yeah yeah it doesn't it's yeah, never he's still like gonna... it, <laughs> you, you never feel like he's gonna pull back especially like after you've seen him do so many things in that first 20 minutes it comes it gets to that point where you're like he's not really gonna ever be merciful it we're gonna watch him deal with these types of interrogations this way every single time <laughs> Yeah, no, and, and he, he has such just like a like a rabid like intensity and like a sort of single mindedness that like he's going to mm-hmm. achieve this thing through pure strength. Like I think about that scene that where he um he goes to the karate dojo uncle to, uh, you know, sort of like warn them that, you know, uh, the same people who are tr- trying to hunt down and kill him are going to actually go for for them. And in order to do it's even doing that, it's like a display of strength. It's not like, hey, guys, I'm coming to you know warn you that something bad's happening and i'm totally down to like work with you guys it's the sequence where he literally punches his way through the door scaring her as if like he's the one who's hunting her down to like kill her or something like Mm -hmm. that and he's trying to do this to get hired again like as protection and proving that he's like a more skilled fighter than than the uncle and 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 his men which he does in a series of like bouts with his students, which is a some sort of a similar sort of like one man against entire dojo fight to like Bruce Lee's in, in yes. Fist of Fury. Yeah. Um, like it's, 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 it's Sonny Chiba's version of that, but that's what makes the ruthlessness like really stand out about it because it is like, you know, he fights all of his students. He's, you know, gleefully taking each one down and kind of relishing doing that. And then he gets into the fight with the actual uncle master himself, who again, despite his short portly demeanor is, is actually, Mm. is quite agile and strong and very much holds his, his own, even like flipping and throwing Sonny Chiba like around the, the, the dojo. Yeah. He was giving uh, some Sammo hung energy for sure. <laughs> That's right. And, and and at one point knocking him down so deliriously that he sees doubles and disappears into like this gorgeous black and white flashback <laughs> where Sonny Chiba's father, who I guess was like an alleged spy who married a Chinese woman and wanted to fuse Japanese karate with Chinese boxing, is brutally executed. And we see the philosophy yeah. that he has passed down to him of not trusting anyone, training your body and your mind so that, you know, no one can best you. The sick guitar Rick theme hit back just in time for him to you know get out of that flashback and then overpower the dojo master and be like you know well you want to hire me like i'm a pretty sick fighter you know yeah. and which after that it's, scene of just pure destruction is so funny to me that that was like his version of like a kind job interview yeah oh definitely definitely and i do really like that that sudden flashback it's the only time they do it it does feel kind of like we're in a a slightly different film for like 10 seconds. Um, and I, and more, it's, more it's movies really should ruthless. do that. They should just break the fabric of the movie for like a one minute flashback yeah. scene It's like, this just is where he came from by context. the way. And it's like yeah. horrifying. You're just watching his dad literally get shot on screen. And it's like, it's, and he's getting at a certain point too, before he sees his father shot, he gets picked up by one of the generals and they call him like a half breed or something because he's mixed Chinese and Japanese, I believe. Yes. Um, and, uh, so, you know, he's dealing with this racism as a, he's like a seven year old. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Sees his, his father get shot. And the, the shot of him, the father getting shot is really brutal and just very blunt. Like, I mean, like the rest of the film is, it's just his head. Like it actually reminded the, me of the shot at the beginning of uh, Zombie Two when the guy uh, shoots the zombie who's like underneath like the bed sheet, and you can just see mm. it's it's just like a bed sheet, and then you just see like the top of the head just like explode. It's like a giant like yeah. squib almost. Yeah, it's so brutal. It's just it's like two shots to the chest and one to the forehead, and it's just so cold. The father doesn't have anything to say. It's just it just it, it it's it's really really brutal. And it just you, just within that that thirty seconds, you're like, oh okay, I kind of get where this character. This is why from. he's such. This is why he's such an asshole. I get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, I would be I too. It. You know, <laughs> makes sense. But uh, yeah, but yeah, well, but, but that's just it. Is it, that's clarifying for us, and it's clarifying sort of like you know for him as a character and for oh, it's the, trauma, it, trauma baby. 
Yeah. Yes, and, 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 and for the heiress, she's just like, I'd rather die than be protected by this animal. Like, it's just like, you know, and and and, yeah. and for him, he just like smirks at that line and he's just like, you know, she's kind of right. Like, I may, in fact, might even be worse than the people coming after you, but I know the way that they think and act and I can be useful to you, which gets him the job and sets him on the path with these sort of Yakuza and Hong Kong mafia and uh, sort of corrupt officials uh, who I then wish. have to turn back to the guy who he set free at the beginning of the movie. Uh, um, yeah, whose siblings they, obviously have since been killed and sold into sex, sex slavery. So they go, you know, we're going to he's been hanging out in Hong Kong with this like Zatoichi style sort of like cane wielding blind assassin. Right. And yep. those guys we're going to hire those guys to then go and take on Sonny Chiba, which turns basically the back half of the movie into just a series of of set pieces where either those two guys are hunting down the heiress and like killing her bodyguards or Sonny Chiba is being hunted down by various goons and, and having to, you know, fight back against them, which we'll get into some of the specific set pieces, but there's some incredible ones. Yeah. That, I that, think this, go ahead. Uh, I think this scene also with this karate uncle is also an interesting point for Terry's character too, because you start to see that he does have a moral compass that extends outside of just what's convenient for him. Mm -hmm. There's this line that the karate uncle says where he's just like, I have faith in you, not just as a fighter, but as a man. And it's kind of this first moment where you're like, okay, someone's, you know, really believes in this. Cause I think this karate uncle also knew Terry's dad mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And that maybe they yep. trained together or something like that. I think they were maybe like peers or, or colleagues or something like that. So he has sort of a connection to him. That's why, you know, he's fighting him, but he's, he's actually kind of beating him at the beginning. You know, you, if you look at him at the end of the fight, like the karate uncle's, barely got a scratch on him and Terry's bleeding and swollen. He's out of breath. Like he passes the fuck out. It's like, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting scene. And you start to see Terry start to be like, okay, like, and one of the reasons he's going to the school to, you know, see if the heiress will hire him as protection is because he hates the Yakuza even more uh, mm -hmm. than, you know, that, that, that's his motivation is he just hates the Yakuza and he wants to fuck with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a good motivating factor, honestly, yeah. you know, there you go. And this, like, and I do like when after this they start to introduce those kind of more eccentric characters. I guess, like, is it is it are they both blind? The two guys that it's like they one guy seems to have like a some like spiky frosted white hair, and then the other guy yeah, has both one. of their eyes are whited out. I think right. Yeah, so I thought there were yeah. two two blind um, like assassins or something like that. But I their introduction is cool, and it's just interesting that they keep introducing these kind of like eccentric assassins to to go after him and it it, it does we'll talk about that a lot with movies. sister street right. fighter exactly because <laughs> they have all these like different factions that the the big guys in control of um and that gets very interesting and fun um this one's a little more uh just in the sense of the style of these people trying to kill them it's a little bit more cool and grounded in a, in a way at least compared to the more cartoonish qualities of of sister street fighter but um but I did, I did really like it, and they use like throwing these little small throwing knives. These um, these two blind assassins. So it's it's a cool style and everything. It's one thing that's great about these series is these eccentric weapons and sort of mm. novelty characters. It's really what makes it so fun and like comic booky or like like a manga. And there's yeah. so many shots that are just like right out of a manga too, with just like, with the way they have these profile shots of everyone and. I love how, in, I mean, we shouldn't talk about Sister Street Fighter yet, but I just love how every, when, you know, characters are introduced, there's this big uh, title that pops up in, in Kanji and it's like their, their yes. name and their character and their style. Oh my God, it's incredible. Yeah. 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 yeah the, the, this one definitely tries to keep it more to like what a Western audience would be familiar yeah, with just in terms of mm -hmm. like the sort of like crime pulp and being like, you know, like these it's guys are more, a little bit yeah. more, they're a little bit more ridiculous and they have some personality and they have some unique sort of like a uh, look and sort of fighting style and all of that but we aren't going to take it to a degree that it like breaks the reality of you're watching a you know sort of like a yakuza film it is mm -hmm. is meant to be um the, the idea but but i do like that they do sort of playfully bend if not break you know like like there's one of my yeah. favorite sequences in the entire film is the one where you think it's going to be like a classic 70s like highway car chase like if you're if you're watching this and you're being like oh dude like this is you know I, you almost expect Sonny Chiba is going to do like a French connection scene when he when he's helping <laughs> follow the heiress to the airport and he and his buddy are in the car and instead of this car chase getting started a giant excavator picks the car up and drops them into like this muddy 
bloody river and completely disrupts that set piece you thought you were about to watch. And then all these goons come up and try to kill Sunny Chiba in in the little river area. And he just unleashes on them and just like and and, and it is just it, 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 it is, again, just emphasizing pure blunt just destruction uh, which is done in the like most iconic image, you know, probably mm. of the film, which is where he punches a dude so hard on the top of his head that the film <laughs> cuts to a profile X-ray image of the head so that we can watch the guy's skull crush in just before it cuts back to his actual face, where then just like blood just yeah. bursts out of like his mouth and eyes, essentially. He's and then he like steps on the other pain. guy so hard, he literally cracks like <laughs> cracks him to death. Like I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> it's it's incredible. I, and I have to thank uh, Ozawa for introducing that little technique or, or style there because it's it, it was introduced in so many um, amazing action video games that I really enjoy. It's, a, it's like, basically the proto fatality. Yeah, exactly. It is, you know, exactly. It's, 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 it's if now, you like I the Street Fighter game series or the idea of a Mortal Kombat fatality, you kind of have this movie to you know thank a little bit. Yeah. They literally, you I think could it just was have in, finish him could like pop finish him could just pop yeah. up on the screen at this point and he cracks down with the x-ray punch. Oh my God. Oh yeah, totally. Like I think it was in Mortal Kombat nine or something when they started to introduce those like uh, little mini, um, little mini grapples and they would do these zoom ins on all the bones breaking and everything. It's basically that. And it's, it's just, it's awesome. There's also another game. It's such called, a crazy uh, experimental what? directing choice too. That just kind of comes out of nowhere to just be like, oh, yeah. you know, we really want to emphasize just the level of destruction, pure, it, like literally skeletal destruction, you know, down to, d- down to it's like purest form. <laughs> I, yeah, I love the great. skull, like the prop of the skull that they used for the punching. Cause you could tell it's almost, it almost looks kind of like soft, like it kind of gives a little bit and it, it's, it just pushes back. There's like a springiness to it. It's, yeah. I don't know, I, it's, you don't see skulls yeah. like that. Like I like how it wasn't like hyper, a hyper. You don't see skulls skull. around much anymore. We should bring you them back. You don't see skulls around yeah. much in general. No, it's all <laughs> probably CG, CG skulls. We got to bring back more skulls and x-ray uh, vision. I agree. That's it's right. kind of, it's kind of cool that they also only use that, that shot one time. Um, and it's, it just kind of, there, there's a later shot, I believe, where he does a similar kind of karate chop on a guy's head, but they don't cut to that x-ray vision. They just have his, like a head kind of, it kind of, uh, it does a little explosion on his forehead and then blood starts to, to drip down. It starts to, um, they, yeah, they, yeah. they, they gave us all one day where he could get a little weird with it. The rest of the day he was like tight shooting schedules, dude, you're, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're exactly. sticking, sticking to your frames, you're blocking, you know, come on. Yeah. But it's still <laughs> like, because it's halfway through, it kind of establishes that. So anytime you do see something that is a punch and their reaction is a lot more than it usually would be in a film like this. You just automatically start to think like you you imagine the bones breaking and everything like that. Yeah. So I, I really like that he just implemented it one time. Um, it would have been probably cool to see it a few more times, but it it, it yeah, really it does been, accent that part. Yeah, just having it happen appear once, it's just kind of like okay, this is the big moment. You just know? to a like, random yeah. dude too is yeah, one, like you did, didn't even save it for the final guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like this. Yeah. This is awesome. Let's do it halfway. Not, not a that movie they needed it. The final guy gets a good enough death. We will, which oh, we totally. will talk about. It's one of the I best. Also, um, I also just speaking on uh, uh, um, Chiba's power uh, and the, the character's power. It's it, it's funny as hell that they have him go through like you know the the excavator picks it up. It shows the car getting like smashed and kind of rolling down and then landing on the the, the in the empty river below. And the car looks pretty mangled and Chiba just gets out no problem and just starts <laughs> kicking ass. And I love the thought that they didn't even bother to be like, let's not show him hurt at all. We, we've we no, established totally how tough fine. this fucking guy is. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's that's not going to take him out. No way. It's so good. It's ready to go. <laughs> No, and well, and 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 there's just there's a whole bunch of a series of set pieces here where like he is just being hunted down. There's that one where he uh, fights the uh, you know he goes back to his apartment and fights the big like bald dude right. who he has to like Keeps you know gouge things. out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's headbutting through the walls and he has to like gouge his eyes out, which is I think the scene where he gouges his eyes out and then there's blood on his fingers and he literally like sniffs them. He's like, wow, it's fucking delicious, you know, yeah. like which is oh my good that's Lord. that's that that's fucked up there's like i think that's also the scene prey. yeah just tasting that, his prey yes 
<laughs> and, and I think that's also the one where the karate guy who he escapes from prison at the beginning and the sister Nachi both try to fight him again. And I, I wanted to highlight this because just because I love Sonny Chiba's delivery on the uh, I got other stuff going on. Like I, mm-hmm. I actually don't have time. Yeah, I, I see that you're angry and you have a whole thing and I kind of understand. I don't have time to deal with your thing, though. Like I'm, you know, this is completely separate from the other movie that I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Even though, you know, he caused it by selling the sister into sex slavery in the first place. And either way that that's breaking in the, the there's the other scene where the blind swordsmen uh do re-kidnap the heiress which is mm-hmm. them sort of like slicing open their protection with the katana and like hurling the dagger the throwing knives into like one of their eyeballs and 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 stuff like that and then he has to free the heiress from the compound which he does in that moment where there's this guy who's trying to rape the heiress uh and he climbs up the side of the building through the window <laughs> grabs him full full throttle by the dick and balls oh yeah and uh and just pulls twist. and twists pulls and and you see the full shot of his uh his hand just holding his underwear and his dismembered penis, penis like in, 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 yeah in in his hand and everything it's disgusting which is maybe a good it's point wild. to bring up the fact that this is uh Def- still not- has Definitely oh, not weird at all that this is the only uh, person of color in the character. This, uh, per, per, this <laughs> definitely not weird that this is the only uh, person of color uh, in the film that this happens to. You know, it's like nothing weird. There. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna hope that that's just an unfortunate casting. Definitely don't <laughs> have to unpack that uh, right now, yeah. right, guys? <laughs> they were like, this guy was just really good for this role, and Sonny Chiba yeah. just, you know, he got a little into it because it was just a cool so, scene. That's yeah, all that's going on there. Character's gonna get their dick and balls ripped off. Hmm. Let's see. Maybe this guy. <laughs> we, they, they were they were trying to uh, appeal. Uh, you know, maybe not appeal. I guess they were like, we're you know we're, we know that we're gonna get double billed with maybe a black exploitation movie at some point. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what they were thinking. Oh, um, but but yeah. that scene is a good scene worth highlighting just for the the distinction there um, of this film being the first ever X rated full on you know sort of like the united states like main release and it was based on nothing but the gore and the violence and just the in the sheer intensity of it which they actually used to brag about in the ads for the film and 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 everything and actually friend of the pod found uh will sloan he found this great new york times article uh, circa, I'm looking at it here, May 1975, where they were actually talking about the fact that, you know, New Line Cinema was r- bragging about the fact that they were putting out an, an X-rated film. And in in the, the quote, the, the guy w- is like, I didn't go into this movie believing in censorship. And I came out of this movie thinking that, like, if any child saw that, like, it makes my stomach, like, you know, sick. <laughs> You know, the idea that they get, that the X rating needs to exist so that kids do not see Sonny Chiba with a full dick and balls in his hand and like bragging <laughs> about it. <laughs> I, I totally forgot about that trivia. Actually, shit, that's that's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it is gory. It is grisly. It is. It is a distinction that is like very, you know, like for for me, it's what kind of really does make this movie feel nasty and ugly in a way Mm -hmm. that I, you know, you know, perversely kind of enjoy, but also think makes the character that much, you know, sort of like thornier and kind of interesting to, uh, to, to, to think about because you do get swept up in like, you know, he's smirking, he's cool. Sonny Chiba's got charisma, but the movie does very viciously and in your face be like this is a nasty fucking dude and you probably shouldn't like this guy on any and he's you know and, and he's powerful and he's kind of useful but only in the specific context that he gets to love fucking murdering someone for you on screen you know it's there's a yeah. there's a nasty contradiction to that that I enjoy about the movie definitely yeah there's something there's something about blood and gore in martial arts movies that just really takes it to another place so other times it's you can, it, most martial arts movies tend to be pretty like PG like the, mm-hmm. it's just a lot of kicking and punching but anytime you start to see blood and like signs of like actual bodily injury it, mm-hmm. it becomes I don't know it's like it's still fun but you, there's just more of a weight to it like the stakes are so much higher and yeah. you're not used to seeing the the pain and suffering from it it just it just really 
Uh, just it just makes it so I love much more it. intense. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, I mean, like I'm, one of my favorite examples ever is a uh, Lau Karlung eight diagram pole fighter. I love the finale mm. where he defangs and deteeths just like everyone at the end of the movie. Like it's just such a almost pointlessly gory addition that does uh, yeah. really just like send. I mean, it's obviously thematically relevant with the whole like sort of like wolf and defanging and all that right. kind of stuff. But it is, but it is just like you know, just so over the top and so brutal and part of what I enjoy about that movie. Yeah, yeah, I do like it, especially like in Chang Che's like later period films like um, Five Element Ninjas, you know, you start to see like, you know, limbs being sliced off and people just being eviscerated and there's just so much more blood. And I it yeah, it kind of takes it to a different place. It's it's yeah. And I do. I also love the um, the way a lot of this I mean, it has a lot of the the wide angles that you'd want in a, in a film like this during the action. But there's also some cool stuff that they do that's more like handheld medium close-up shots where they're doing more like grapples and things like that and it makes things look very uh again powerful of course but also a little bit it's it, i mean i guess nowadays you almost call it shaky cam but it's not it doesn't feel disorienting it just it, it, it feels as if uh you're kind of being tossed around with them a little so, bit it, it's a it's a cool um, no, there's I'm yeah, I know what you mean. There, there's kind of like a there's there's a grounded weight to the photography that almost yeah. has like this kind of like street brawl kind of yeah. you know, but 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 it is like you know taken to some really really you know sort of graphic and you know <laughs> yeah. some some extreme levels that you're maybe not used to seeing and framed in that kind of way that it's framed. But that's once again, I think just to the benefit of the movie, it really mm-hmm. does just like make it make it feel like you know he shouldn't a guy shouldn't be in a Yakuza movie holding a gory dick and balls in his hand and holding <laughs> it up to the camera and like screaming into the camera and being like, isn't this awesome? You know, yeah, like and Bruce Lee did not do that. That's for sure. That kind of, thing. The, you know, that's just, it. It, it's just, it, <laughs> it feels, it feels uh, wrong. And honestly, it feels a little like amoral. and there's, yeah, again, yeah. it's just part of, part of the kind of pleasure of the movie in a way, well, uh, which it's is almost like, yeah, cause he's, essentially he's, he's punishing this guy for trying to rape this woman, but yeah, it's just any. It's just so unsavory because he's he's a black actor, you know. It's it's pretty fucked. But well, yeah, and, I mean, and and he's so gleeful about it. Even if the guy yeah, deserved the it, you're like, dude, come on, <laughs> don't yeah, put like, it I, down. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely you have that thorniness just because right. He's the only casted black actor, but I do think that that thorniness would still be there to a degree if it was a Japanese actor too, because of like yeah, that close up of oh, him doing sure, it. He for is. Sure satisfied he's like look at oh, yeah. this dick and balls in my hand he, he doesn't do that move very often it, he busts it out once in a while you know when when the vibe is right yeah and exactly then, boom, just rips yeah, off he knows dick and balls. he knows when to use the old dick <laughs> twist for yeah. sure it definitely was not like it didn't seem like it was the first time he'd done this to someone <laughs> that's like, for sure yeah. you know like, this was like not the first time move. Move. he just did that as if he'd done it a hundred times before like just just he has, has the muscle memory of, and do you know you what? Know, 100 turn. times later, yeah. it feels just as good, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never gets old. Getting more satisfaction. No one in the, the audience will it. understand how good this feels. <laughs> there's, there's hopefully very few people on this planet that would know the enjoyment of that experience. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. It's so funny um, that that's just what his performance feels like, though, and it is part of what I really yeah. do um, love love about the movie as it kind of you know pivots toward the the finale. There's a, there's a, there's a brief sequence where he does you he does get captured and you think he's briefly going to be in trouble and the one sort of like Hong Kong. A uh, woman is playing Russian roulette with him, strapped to the uh, yeah. to the to, to the tree next to the cliff, and uh, and, and his sidekick is uh, the one who sort of confesses to where he took the heiress, like where they, uh, you know. Uh, saved her and uh you can see that sunny chiba is so disappointed just this is the one sort of like bruce lee like i guess like philosophical difference he's like no dude you should have let me get shot in the fucking head russian roulette style mm-hmm. to protect that woman and the fact that he didn't he's just like you know for shame dude part of and- his uh part of it's one of the clauses in his evil code of conduct where you <laughs> yes. can't narc on uh, you know, the <laughs> uh protecting bro you can't don't narc on me bro and nope. he's got that uh, that warrior mindset. He's got to die by the sword. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. Yep. And he, and he does get into that great. Too much, man. That too. Yeah. His, I do love. Friend, I, like his I really life love... would be. He's so dedicated to his friend. You know, he can't. He yeah. can't let him get got. You know, it's it's his life would be meaningless without Terry. It's so like I do love their 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 kind of um, 
just how different they are, their contrast. Like, I, I again, it's popping up just because I'm watching it on Tubi, but when they're being dropped into the, the river, there's this shot of them, and I forgot about it, but right before, Chiba is, like, su- still super confident. He's being held 50 feet in the air. He's like, oh, I'll get through this. Don't worry. And right behind him, his his uh, his friend is, like, holding him and closing his eyes and, like, just clenching his his whole face. So it's... it's uh, I just I just love that constant thing that they have and the the sidekick character he's in it throughout um and it, it's kind of awesome that he's included in all of the I the do love how how moments. quickly like how ashamed he is like right away and how mm-hmm. quickly he redeems himself in that fight with the uh blind swordsman in the in in, in the alley where oh, uh, yeah. the, you know it's it's Sunny Chiba and, and him are having a great fight and he just yeah. rides in with the motorcycle trying to like run him over um <laughs> yeah and you know he just gets sliced up and 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 he gets killed and uh Sunny they Chiba has to finish the brutal. fight with the uh cuz is that the first time where we really see him use like the wrist blade blockers that he has where they kind of oh, come into man. play he's like he's like blocking yeah. the sword swings it's with such the, a great the blockers so cool it's so brilliant because, like, of course he's going to go up against someone with a sword at some point. You know, it's the perfect thing. It just completely like they're like these crazy gauntlets that are like wrapped around, so but they sick. also have these. They've got those hidden throwing daggers. Like it's it's wild. Yes. Like, it's, oh yeah, yeah. They're, they're, he gets those, to use that in the finale. It's awesome. Yeah, those oh, are awesome. So cool. And I found it interesting too that like the uh, the the brutality just never goes away. Even when they cut to the um, his his kind of friend or sidekick or partner uh and he's dying and like he's got the helmet on and everything there's like blood just pouring down his face from the helmet because it's he's been so heavily injured by the crash and like it's it's just legitimately brutal even when he's saying goodbye to a to a friend Um, it's like meant to be like a genuinely sentimental scene where he's just like you know i i can't believe you know you you did the right thing in this moment and you 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 died for your for your sin (laughs) yeah and again this guy has been presented most characters are very brutal in this movie and very violent but this character although he has violent moments for sure he's 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 played as like a more comedic lighthearted, almost cartoonish character compared to the the rest of their mean qualities um so when he gets just as mean as a death of a death i was like oh my god this just never lets up yeah yeah no one is and yeah no no one is safe in this film. <laughs> no you know, anyone could die a, a horribly painful uh crazy death at any moment which which oh, literally just is the name of the game in the final yeah. shipyard set yeah. piece where he takes yeah. on the entire Hong Kong mafia. He takes on this guy from the opening sequence who uh, also he has to take on, as it turns out, uh, the heiress's sort of father's colleague who it turns out the entire time he's been kind of like paying them and wants her to sign over the company, yada, yada. Um, but he this the shipyard set piece, which I love that it almost starts like a bond, like infiltration, sort of like espionage sequence at first. He's like stealth like taking out guards and hurling them overboard um he's like punching one he does this great maneuver where he has two on either side of a like hallway wall and he Mm -hmm. punches one in the gut and the other in the neck so his arms go outstretched (laughs) in both directions and then he swaps and hits the other guy in the gut and the other one in the neck just to make sure that it's completely (laughs) um, even Yep. Yeah. He's and got a bit he, of OC, he's got a bit of OCD when he's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I really I understand equal you, distributing I understand, pain. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then there's, he there's, just goes the fuck off. He oh, just yeah. like like this is the most like bodily destruction in a sort of like finale I've seen one guy ever dish out where he starts fighting his way through an entire staircase of dudes like in a long <laughs> shot where you can see each one go down and as he takes a dude out he's like leaving the corpses like in the background of the frame and he's yeah. just like yeah. literally cataloging and he's and just ones, creating a pile. <laughs> there's a pile. And the ones that are still alive are like clutching their eyes and writhing and agony, oh yeah just, just like shaking <laughs> like, i love i love when they just he he goes through the door and he and you see the establishment of like just where this location is and instantly when i saw the multi-platforms and the levels like the stairs that go up to the oh, middle yes. metal platform i'm like okay this is the finale or at least one there's, of them this yeah, is going to be a set piece and sure enough well, it and, is, and, 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 and this have, is the one primarily scored to just the sounds of him like breaking mm-hmm. a bone or gouging an eye and like oh. do and the, the piles of dudes just screaming you know yeah. dude <laughs> it's outrageous it, is, it's yes yeah, so it is 
It's, it truly is. And it's and it's um like they have a couple great examples of just what they show. I think I mentioned this one, but I love it, is when he punches a dude so hard in the stomach he just vomits. <laughs> That's fucking it's wild. so gross. I, it looks like <laughs> corn corn chowder or something like yeah. that. It's just oh it's like God. mostly it's creamy and white with chunks of like yellowy orange bits. It's it's incredible. I love yeah, the I lo- dude he hurls down multiple stories below and his his head literally explodes like a bucket <laughs> of paint. His brains yes. just go everywhere. Just, <laughs> Oh, he God. lands face first, yeah. literally face yeah. first. Doesn't it's, he like jump off the from the second story and like lands on another guy too to break his fall, and then that guy just vomits out blood? It's oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's one of those whole sequences. And then there's a there's a great shot because I know that Steven Seagal or whoever he worked with, the directors, whatever, w- looked at this shot and was like, "I'm doing this in every single one of my movies." But it's the one where he he pulls the guy's arm over his shoulder so that oh, he can classic. break it. Yeah, and it's just it's pure. Just you're waiting for the tension. You're waiting for the tension. Break. He screams. It's pure Seagal. And I was yeah. just like, I, I, and, oh, and, and, and I'm pretty sure he breaks it again when he's done too. He's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. this guy's done. Whatever. I'll just <laughs> <places. laughs> keep breaking that arm. And what's cool, too, is in some of these parts, um, especially when he gets to the very top floor, like where he's past the kind of middle metal platform section. Um, and he's literally throwing have, people down into the pile of corpses where you can actually see yeah. the shots of all the people he's already taken out from below. Yeah. It's fucking unbelievable. It's great. And they have this um, th- this th- a couple of really good good long shots of very long choreography where they don't cut away and there's about you know five different people on screen and he has to actually jump from like uh, one corner of the metal bars to the other over an actual empty like an empty uh second story balcony so it's it's a it's really impressive honestly it's it's probably one of the most impressive um uh set pieces in the whole film if not the most impressive it's super impressive. It almost has like some Metal, metal Gear solid energy. Like it was the first Metal Gear <laughs> sure. the one where he's like on that boat. He's just infiltrating shit. And then. Oh, yeah, amazing. definitely. Except he's just more. How many different so ways can I kill stealth. a guy? He's can not I being crush a skull about it, with though. a pole? No, he's, yeah. He's, he's stomping on necks. He's doing that bit where he's whipping out the throwing knife. But he does it again in this like very slow, like inevitable way where it's this close up where you can see his gauntlet and his face and frame. And he's contorting his face and his hand reaches over to it and just, you know, slowly pulls it out and then just, yeah. you know, straight everything into the is, dude's neck. And everything <laughs> is so carefully measured and built up. Like, it's just yeah. amazing. The, the, the momentum and the, you almost just feel him like powering up. Like with energy right before he just un- un- unleashes this move, it's crazy. Oh yeah, they even have like a couple gags, like they're almost Fulci esque, where like knives get buried into uh, eyes, and that you actually see the guy like pull it out, and the bloods come out of the There's hole and everything. So like, much uh, eye damage. There's oof. so much eye violence. This movie. <laughs> yeah. too. It's he yeah. really. This is this is a, this is a meme of Japan and Italy shaking hands. You know, oh, yeah. a moment. <laughs> yeah. You know, just eye violence. Fuck eyes, dude. Make that meme later. <laughs> yes, yes, please do. Oh my god! And then when he this thing is to it like it this this whole sequence never really ends because as soon as uh, as soon as Chiba is is done with this location he moves on to like the big boss guys and he, one he, of the he first goes into little he, office yeah you know. one of the first things he does is get the 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 one of the the woman the women that are um, kind of in charge and uh, that met with him in the beginning scene where they were offering him the job and everything and yeah, part of the he, Hong like, Kong mafia yes the one who was and, playing and, Russian roulette on on him right. Yeah, and he instantly like t- tackles her behind a couch and just starts pumbling her. Like it's kind of off camera, I think, because he's doing it to a woman. I assume that's why yeah, they did I that. Think that's but why, yeah. but it, it's yeah. still just you have a couch, you know who's behind it, and he's just like stomping <laughs> and punching as hard as he fucking can. It's it just gets so so brutal to he's just a nonstop killing machine at this point, really. Yeah, well, and and, and I do like that they go, okay, dude, you know, we we get it, you know, like you're you're good at what you do. So how about just like a one-on-one fight with like yeah. the guy from the very beginning of the, of of the film who he broke out of um prison like would that would that satisfy you like you'll just <laughs> we'll let you have whatever you, you want if you alone. can just beat this one they're guy running you know? out of, they're running out of guys for terry to kill at this point you know like, <laughs> yeah can we, can we just skip to the final fucking boss right now and 
see how that goes. <laughs> like, yeah, which, like, which I gotta say, the, the I love the lighting, uh, the wind, the sort of like rain soaked sort of like oh, ship yeah. exterior yeah. that they kind of go down, and the fact that once again this is just functionally scored to just the lightning strikes and like the rain coming down as these two guys are just staring each other. Just so much down. posturing, so much posturing. Yes, like, yep. it's just like two peacocks just like rearing up at each other. You know? <laughs> like it's getting ready. It is. It's totally doing their is. best poses. <laughs> yeah, it's like no. Check it's, out this pose. There's so much <laughs> style <laughs> over one? fighting in this part, which I I really did enjoy. It was Terry just makes like, Terry's face just really makes just the most contorted. Like it's like his yep. face like shrinks all the way until just the middle of itself. Yeah, his his, 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 his lips, lips like, make shapes I've never seen before. <laughs> yeah, any, I've never seen like facial expressions like this on any human being before. Looks like an yeah, like I, an F one racetrack for a second. You know, I'm like, What's I swear to God, here? it's like the only actor that I've seen come close is Jim Carrey when he's going insane yeah. off yeah. of like Ace Ventura or something. It's fucking that. Mu- it's that over the top. And I, I it's, mean, it, I love it, every it, minute. It's, of a, it. it's extreme mugging. You know, yeah. it's just it's, extreme. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's and I love that it gets it, you. You think that it would be this like um, it, it almost feels strangely enough almost calculated the way he he evolves it because as the film goes on it feels like the face just gets more and more contorted by the time he's at the finale they have like three different close ups of him doing a move and then just doing things that are so unnatural um, and I I loved it I, I just I love his energy well yeah and, and, and I kind of like that this goes back to the thing at the beginning where it is again less about the fight choreography this isn't like the most impressive like boss fight you've ever right. seen staged by someone or anything by any means but there's there is they've built the right amount of weight up yes. through the entire sequence we've seen leading up to it yeah. and we've gone back to this altercation where the two guys were first staring each other down with the spaghetti western sort of close-ups eyeing each other up and it is again just who can display this you know pure strength pure power who can just like completely emasculate the other guy <laughs> at first through sheer posing then they get into the, the, the fighting although the mob bosses kind of try to cheat and they shoot Sonny Chiba in the leg Mm -hmm. Um, at, 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 at one point. And also the sister at one point gets involved and like holds him in place. And this like crazy move where she's just like, if I hold on to him and you stab me, you can then also stab him and kill him, which is how they also try to beat him. But none of this is enough. No, he fights through his wound and he grabs the dude by the fucking throat and just the (laughs) slow motion shot of like his fingernails literally sinking into his neck and yanking his fucking vocal cords like completely out like in case you thought like Roadhouse did it first here's Sonny <laughs> Chiba the throat coming out the wicka wicka guitar riff kicking oh, yeah. back in the gleefully smiling off into the camera and holding it up in the wide shot he's just like dude i fucking i love violence and through sheer <laughs> and like vulgar answer. force i have fuck it is yeah literally it's the answer i've won the day i'm the coolest motherfucker it's like it's such a crazy again it's it's when you if you started to think about this movie it's such an ugly amoral movie oh it is but it's it's, it's so, so powerfully made and it so lives in the reality of this like character like this is a movie yeah. that totally identifies with this character and Sonny Chiba totally lives in it it's such yeah. a cr- what like a great ending which is why honestly I, I love it yep yeah me too and I and I also love uh because I'm pretty sure the, the the next two films in the series two came out the same year, right? So they were like that is wild. They were already setting it up, and and yeah. I think at the at the end, and I'm not sure if this is a maybe a restoration like add on or something like that. But it, it as soon as he stands up in the rain, he's the victor and all that. They're like the end for now. Stay tuned for the return of Street Fighter. And like no, I they, guess they, they knew, they knew. Yeah, hundred percent. It's awesome. This is what they were trying to do. This was the plan. They were like, dude. Right. They were like, America wants and enter the dragon. Let's give them, you know, let, let's give them our version that we can cheaply produce, and let's mm-hmm. make a bunch of them and hope that it 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 works. And they could turn these. They were these were so cheap to make. They could turn them around pretty fast. That's why right. Sister Street so, Fighter comes out just a couple yeah. months later. As well, <laughs> the studio. The studio was so efficient. Like they were just pumping these out. Like, and, and, and that's why a lot of them have this kind of. There's a boilerplate kind of like you know tropes that they continually go back to but it's what yeah. made it, makes it work you know and 
yeah, yeah. They, they, another way another way they, to look at it is that ozawa had 100 chances to refine his skill and <laughs> nail this type of movie before a western audience finally saw it and went oh that's really cool <laughs> yeah i've yeah. i've literally seen posters where they refer to sonny chiba as like you know the japanese bruce lee you know so they were for sure marketing off that i mean just like all the other bruce exploitation movies and stuff that were probably coming out yeah then a lot yeah, of these so, so like, Sonny Chiba's just got to be one of the best, like most successful versions of that. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of these feel like when you have these kind of these stories that you've seen a thousand times, it just kind of breaks down to the director's style and usually the star that's leading the vehicle. It's just so that because usually the star, like with Chiba, obviously we've been talking endlessly about it, just his his charisma, his like animalistic kind of uh, performance that he gives off. It just gives something separate from the same story you've seen a thousand times. And then um, with Ozawa, I just really love his uh, his like his kind of handheld style during some of the the fighting sequences, some of the innovative stuff that he did with like the X ray and and what how he uh, how he. Um, kind of shows you violence. It's it's very different from other things I've seen, even if it's a very yeah. typical storyline. Yeah, he like definitely that. uses the fact that he learned how to be lean and be economical, and he uses it to his advantage. And it's to his mm-hmm. advantage of a movie that's about bluntness and about yes. like pure communication just through being brutal. And you know, you know, th- th- this is a guy who doesn't talk. This is a guy who just crushes a skull. You know, <laughs> right. and there's something to be said about having a lean, mean style that uh, you know helps sell the impact of that. I think he's mm-hmm. a lean, mean, dick ripping machine. Harry, that's right you know it's that's, hell yes that's one thing put it on the poster they practically did put it on the poster by bragging yeah. about the x rating they were like come watch violent scenes you shouldn't be allowed to watch yeah. that's true it's like we can't tell you what that x rated scene is but you trust me you want to see it <laughs> yeah that's right but uh yeah we're pivoting towards reductive rating round on the street fighter honestly this is probably closer to the five than you might expect for me Hell yeah. That's um awesome. it is like it, it it's probably not the best y- uh, yakuza film it's maybe not the best mm-hmm. martial arts movie but i don't know there's something about the really lean mean merging of those two things that this does so well and i think ozawa just again having 100 times at bat to nail this like a lean, blunt, kind of economical, stripped-down style that he had just found a perfect meeting point in the subject matter of this character who just, you know, loves to just not talk, to just m- communicate entirely through animalistic rage and like just a pure level of sort of like gleeful sadism and it really does make how extreme this character is have so much impact to feel like he's been shot in more of like a grounded 70s crime film and I think that that is what kind of sells so much of what this film is doing and with, and that's before you even mentioned the fact that just like Sonny Chiba is you know genuinely incredible in the film and I am incredibly impressed that he manages to capture what it is that audiences would have been missing by not having, you know, more Bruce Lee films going over to the West. You know, he, mm-hmm. he, he, in some ways they are doing some copycat bits. They are doing, you know, some of the way that they frame, you know, his, uh, he gets to do the fist of fury, one man dojo sequence. Mm-hmm. He gets to do, you know, sort of like the long, I think about the under enter the dragon, the long sort of like subterranean scene where he fights a ton of different dudes. And it, you know, it feels like they were trying to do that with him, going his way through the multi-layer sort of staircase finale and everything like that and he's doing the mugging he's doing the battle cries he's doing the flexing and contortions and everything that you would want but at the same time he's doing it in just such a more ugly uh and amoral way than lee would have ever wanted to play lee wanted to you know, he, he wanted to be a man of the people. He wanted to, you know, impart some sort of philosophical lesson. And there's something that's so striking to me about this film. This film does not want to fucking do that. It, again, this is the movie that says violence is the answer. And <laughs> violence is awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and, uh, and, 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 and it, it, it's still perverse and it's still disgusting. And the fact that so much of the movie is scored to just screaming and the sound <laughs> design of various eye gougings and genital mutilation 
vibrations and throat tearings is you know again Cut to it, 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 <laughs> it's living in that contradiction and yeah the the fucking the the wicka wicka guitar riff <laughs> uh theme that he has is just one of the funkiest and most rousing that any character has ever been given so i i totally see why sunny chiba was a star off this and yeah this is a this is the jamie four for me um for sure nice Nice. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to for it. Uh I this is going to be one that I revisit for sure. I I think about it all the time and it's interesting just because most of the time when I watch an action movie like this um or a martial arts movie, I usually do like the more fast-paced kind of intricate choreography when it comes to the fighting. Um it's just it, it's more exciting. It feels like dance or something like that, but I got to say this one sells the blunt power and violence so well that I just it, it it really just works for me um Chiba with his his uh physical performance with all the face contortions and the sounds that you you know you some of them you've heard from Bruce Lee and then some are just added on from Chiba's <laughs> inner I don't know spirit he's just he's channeling something that you've probably never seen uh, from a martial arts movie it's uh it's such a such a mean character, honestly, and this this mo- movie in general has a very mean spirit to it that I uh, that I do adore, honestly. Um, you know, there's there's a couple questionable moments, uh, of course, with his character, but I think it's all built into what this movie's trying to do. So I think it it mostly works, and uh, yeah, it's a f- fantastic finale. A lot of really awesome. Um, uh, cool stylistic choices that aren't in other films, like we've talked about the X-ray. Just the way that he like crushes his hand on a forehead and blood will just start splat, uh, just spilling out. It's it's just amazing. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a a four and hi- would highly recommend. Yeah, yeah, you, I, I would also give this a four. I, it's a movie I definitely return to every so often. I just remember even just finding a UA, uh, sorry, a VHS copy of this. Uh, the English dub, you know, after having seen uh, uh, what movie, what Tarantino movie does this pop up in? Is it True Romance? True I Romance so. is or the one where Christian Slater goes to the uh, the, yeah. the he he goes to the marathon of all the sequels and everything as well. Right. Which, if no one's seen those, unfortunately, not as relentlessly paced and 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 violent <laughs> as uh, this one. Um, but you know, the first sequel features him punching a dude so hard in the back of the head that his eyes pop out of their sockets. So <laughs> exactly. it's like you know, so it's still worth your watching. Time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking at the American poster for the Street Fighter, and it's that one where it's like Sonny Chiba wearing a leather jacket with like you know just bare chested and he's mm-hmm. like literally like one of my favorite posters guys. honestly and the tagline <laughs> if you've got to fight fight dirty really just sums this movie up <laughs> yes completely. that's great it's so just, good <laughs> it really delivers on that premise. no honor no honor at all yet that evil code of conduct does exist and this character does yep follow these these you know rules and you know this character is an outcast and i i find it interesting that they portray him as half chinese and half Japanese, because automatically, you know, he's an outcast from arguably both uh, societies, Mm -hmm. and he leans into that, he accepts that, he accepts accepts that he's maybe not even, like, fully human, like, he's almost like a beast, you know, Mm -hmm. and and the way his parents are killed, and the the way he just can, like, only trusts himself and and his hands and and the the damage that he's capable of inflicting, like, that's all he really knows. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. I, I find that so interesting. And the same like the, the sister Street Fighter characters also have Chinese and Japanese. So it's it's kind of interesting these these parallels between that. Cause I I wonder if that's just to sort of capitalize on, you know, Bruce Lee and End of the Dragon being shot in Hong Kong. Cause some of those establishing shots where they're, you know, the Hong Kong harbor, it's just like right out of Enter the Dragon, you know. It's mm-hmm. it's they're obviously evoking that that kind of uh that time and place and, and the success of that film, but you cannot um, begrudge them wanting to cash in on the fact that that was such like a huge success and people were yeah. dying to have like more movies like that. I mm-hmm. think the character itself, though, and I, I Sonny Chiba said this in interviews too. If you've seen some of those uh, uh, interviews on the on the, on the special uh, edition discs, but um, the contrast of this character to the you know Sonny Chiba, the man, is quite interesting because I don't even necessarily think Terry Seguri was necessarily Chiba's favorite character because it didn't really reflect his ethos of of a martial being a martial artist and the mm-hmm. sort of bushido uh you know n- noble sort of like ideology like i i think he was in real in reality you know he's a very strong proponent of like you know traditional karate 
And I, I think he just honestly played a character that was so opposite of, of himself. Um, so yeah. it's, it's interesting to see that, like, you know, this was the, this would be the character that would define him uh, as an, as an actor and, and really just like obviously his most iconic role next to, to kill Bill. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think in reality, he obviously, you know, was probably pretty, good guy you know and the whole I, I think we should talk about the japan action club uh that he established you know oh was, yeah we're, well we're gonna bring that up for sure with sister up? street fighter okay cool well, let's, yeah, get, yeah. let's get into it let's get into it then um because that also really connects into the you know physicality that he delivers and you know his facial contortions and his and every single like cold calculated movement that that was kind of like the ethos of the japan action club is, is just like acting with this physicality and not necessarily like using like dialogue to project yourself as an actor and a presence on screen. I, I, I feel like this is like a, like a perfect, you know, manifest manifesto of, of his style of, of acting and, and just conveying expression and power. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, we'll we're going to yeah. talk about it some more when we move on to uh, Sister Sister Street Fighter. We're going to talk about some more Sonny Chiba as well. But I, I guess we could also say uh, RIP to the man, too. Recently passed yeah. away in uh, 20, 2021 due to some c complications with COVID, I guess. So it's a pretty yeah, nasty way to really go, honestly. Sad. So. 2021. I remember that that hit really hard uh, when, mm -hmm. when we found out. And, it, and it, 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 I, I believe he was unvaccinated at the time. I, I was, don't know if that, yeah. you know, I, I can't. Yeah, who knows if, who knows if that was by choice? I mean, this was at a time when, you know, vaccines were not, you know, readily available worldwide. So mm -hmm. you would think that if, you know, if they had some in Japan, it's like, let's get some to Sunny Chiba guys. But, you know, it <laughs> he would be the first like, guy. I would, I would have went to Japan myself. I would have been like, yeah. I were take my shot. <laughs> Sonny. I'm getting, yeah, Sonny, no, <laughs> we're going to save Sunny Sunny Chiba, Chiba still <laughs> hasn't gotten his first uh, <laughs> Pfizer. We need to get this straight to Sunny Chiba. Uh, but Jim, RIP. I mean, what an amazing actor. What an amazing man. Yeah. Just, yep. Yep. Uh, and it's so it's so interesting that there are probably like generations of cinephiles that like yeah you would have either been introduced to Sonny Chiba from seeing those Street Fighter scenes in True Romance or you saw him in Kill Bill you know years and years later and I I kind of just love that he's I don't know just just the fact that they they teased him in those earlier Tarantino films and then he just ends up being cast in such a big role in Kill Bill it's just I don't know yeah. it's just amazing it, to see things come full circle like that. Absolutely. It's awesome too. Also, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift too. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, he, yeah he had a, that's right. He had a, he had a, he had a yeah. reputation. It's, it's, it's awesome. But yeah, that, I think that's going to wrap it up here for yeah. the Street Fighter because we're going to start talking about Sister Street Fighter, but we're going to be right back and we are going to be talking. We're going to be going from February 1974 to August 1974 when the Tao Company was like, what about a lady street fighter? Yeah, <laughs> we could do it, you know? So let's, let's, uh, let's talk about it. We're going to be right back, and we're going to be talking about sister street fighters. Stick around. All right, we are back and we are talking Sister Street Fighter, the 1974 Japanese crime martial arts action film directed by uh, Kazuhiku Yamaguchi, written by Norofumi Suzuki, Masahiro uh, Kakafuda, and starring Itsuko Shihomi um, from uh, The Street Fighter, obviously, as we were talking about. Uh, yeah, she, she played the Sister Nachi, uh, who gets sold into sex slavery and then stabbed. Uh, not a great fate there. Here she is the titular uh, sister street fighter this time around, going on a similar mission of uh, revenge and to take down various um, criminals. And as I was just mentioning, uh, the street fighter came out in February 1974 in order to cash in on the success of Enter the Dragon. And uh, after already being something of a hit over there based on Sunny Chiba star power, the crazy uh, X rating campaign where they were like, come check out this dirty movie you shouldn't be allowed to see. Uh, 
by August, they already had this one in the can, ready to go, not at all related in plot. It just has Shahomi and Chiba back together and uh, as adver- and, and it was advertised as a spinoff in order to cash in on that success. Uh, now she's the lead. He's in the small supporting role. And uh, I mean, she's kind of like the main thing here like she's she's yeah. very good and she was apparently i i liked brandon was bringing up the sort of japan action club the jec that sunny chiba wrote she was apparently a very exceptional pupil at the J- japan action club and he actually mentored her so that was how this whole thing kind of kind of came to be so she literally went to the sunny chiba school of how to do martial arts acting the, the sunny oh. <laughs> chiba school of hard knocks hard karate knocks uh, Hell That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I love um well I love just just establishing her as a as a like a martial artist is is really cool to have just that it, it reminded me actually of I think it's the drunken master the beginning where uh, with Jackie Chan where it's just like him in a room showing all these different techniques it, this that's more long form like it's a little longer in the techniques he's showing but it, it does open with just her doing some moves and this really sharp close oh, in on her well, eyes. Well, I mean, the, 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 they're trying to highlight some of the popularity of obviously the Hong Kong uh, stuff as well. Like the, mm-hmm. you're talking about the opening with like the neon sort of like primary color studio. Yeah, lit. there's like the really uh, electric blue kind of like background. It's like these amazing like mirror shots, which is kind of like evoking into the dragon a little bit. So it's it's a yeah, pretty doing that, like fractured yeah. lady from Shanghai kind of like mirror thing. Yeah, but but, but also I was thinking of the um, opening. Of of 36 chamber of Shaolin. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Totally. As, 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 as well, yeah. where you just see him like practicing his moves in what basically looks like a studio set and like, it's like know, a red, it's like a, like a red background or something, right? Yeah. 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 And just, exactly. and just so I'm, and just so I'm clear, it was either the drunken master. It might've also been fearless hyena, the Jackie Chan, the movie I was thinking of, but either way it has the same kind of like, established you know here's here's some of my style as a martial we're introducing before. you to a new star here yeah. she is look at her you know <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and this it's cool an amazing, they, they end up yeah. doing like a montage with these uh like the th- these weird kind of edits where it's just like seven versions of her doing that same move kind of thing it, it feels almost uh, it's it's a very 70s edit and there's like uh, some amazing like freeze frames and and crossfades mm-hmm. like it's so it's yeah already the the visual language of this film is starting to be a bit more playful than uh yeah. ozawa's sort of yes. more direct kind of approach which is really fun yeah totally yeah this is this is a lot more i think playful is 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 the word even at times like wacky uh just just eccentric spe- yeah yeah eccentric like speaking on just 100 different factions and all that it, it gets a little weird i mean but brandon brandon way. brought up the sort of like comic booky uh aspect that you know the street fighter has a little bit of it here it's just like taken to it's pure ridiculousness and, and in yeah. terms of the design and everything like that D- despite the fact that she is like still doing you know she, like she's doing the the, the cheapest school grounded. of sort of like the athletic brutality and, and she's mm. even trying to do it in a little bit more of an elegant and more heroic fashion like she's her character is more driven by like an actual sort of sympathetic sort of like good-hearted quest and but but that but she's no less like skillfully sort of like agile and uh brutal with the punching and the kicking and the and, and the snapping and, and everything mm-hmm. when it when, when it counts and I, I know that it was also a pretty big deal to have like a female heroine that was also incredibly tough but also like not sexualized in the movie like she spends most of this movie just like actually in her sort of like traditional sort of like karate outfit and everything, uh, even yes. though she's at this at a, like in seventies Japan where like nobody is dressed like that. I'm surprised like more characters don't like comment on the fact that she yeah. like is completely fish out of water. And I would maybe is also to Brandon's point too about you know that they're trying to say that these characters are out of lockstep with the the current world the same way that the Sunny Shiba character was by also being you know um, sort of uh, half half Chinese and, and half Japanese. Japanese um, as well, but but the visually playful aspect of this, I imagine, has to just come from Kazuhiku Yamaguchi's just like brand. Because I've only seen one film from mm-hmm. him, and so Brandon may be able to help us and tell him tell us some of the other ones that he's seen, and and you know, sort of some things that recur for him, maybe. But the one film I've seen is a uh, Wolf Guy. Which is one of the most insane movies I've ever seen. Also starring Sonny Chiba and Jamie. Ad- have you seen Wolf Guy? No, but I'm I'm gonna watch it okay. incredibly soon now because I love Chiba. I, and, yeah, I gotta see this guy. I, do something I like cannot that. like it, it, Sunny Chiba is playing an ancient werewolf detective who finds <laughs> he's himself. The an, in he's the ancestor. Of, he's the ancestor 
of an ancient lycanthrope clan. Uh, he's yes, I, yeah. It's he's, so he's not like full werewolf. He has like the powers and abilities of a werewolf, but he never goes like this movie's kind of famous for like he never goes full werewolf in it. Which is okay, like yeah. interesting. It's I, sorry, like spoilers. He has I mean, discipline, okay? Yeah, you but know? he's got the discipline of a werewolf. You know, he's he he's that's right. Yeah. It's like how he's not six foot six in, in in the Street Fighter, but he his presence might is as like well six be foot six. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and but 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 that's just it. So he he's like a of of sort of a part werewolf detective who's yeah. finds himself in a sort of martial arts yakuza movie where musician musicians I think are being like torn apart by like the phantom spirit of some sort of tiger it's and yeah yeah and then and then he just goes uh he beats the shit out of some corrupt like rapist record producers and he gets into like a government conspiracy sort of like sci-fi just shaking just film. shaking things really shaking things up in the japanese music industry you know just just yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you seen um a haunted that also Turkish has a crazy bathhouse? flashback um Oh no, so, I haven't seen Turkish Bathhouse, but I've been meaning to because that poster is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, just the, the <laughs> title of the movie alone, A Haunted Turkish Bathhouse, just <laughs> I had never been more like intrigued by a film, the title. Like when when you look up his filmography, you're like, wait a minute, what? Like you see the poster yeah. and there's like it's also I if I'm not mistaken, like loosely based on uh Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat. Or no, oh, it's okay. unbelievable. Because I am it has seeing... an element of that. I could be making that up completely. I might be thinking of a different film. Actually, you know what? I I'm... mean, there is a black cat on the poster right next yeah. to the uh, naked woman in the bathhouse. I yeah. think there, there, there's like a curse or something that has to do with this cat, right? Like someone fucks with a cat. And I think there's like... That a sounds Edgar Allan Poe. I believe you. <laughs> yeah. The imagery looks pretty cool. Like I'm just looking at the um, the banner that it has on Letterboxd and it's just like yeah. this girl, I think she looks like it's it's blacked out because she's silhouetted, but she looks like it's like a naked girl in a doorway and then the cat is actually the shadow on the wall instead of her. So it it feels like it kind of have some surreal elements, but I'm very intrigued Oh, by dude, that, that that's some uh, cat people right yeah, there. That's yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, Turner shit right there. I, I <laughs> highly recommend you seek down a haunted Turkish bathhouse. It's very entertaining. Uh, just, haunted yeah. Turkish yeah. bathhouse. Check it's, out a uh, wolf guy so that you can see the crazy flashback in it of his the, the, the sort of like xema xenophobic hatred that his ancient clan of lichens had the, the had. persecuted uh, lycanthropes. You know, like oh that's that, that's right. The, there's a scene in that. I'm, I'm, it's been a little bit since I've seen it, but there's a scene in that where he he has like memories of like his mother like breastfeeding him that like comes oh up when God. he's having sex. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's, it's wild. I, I, one I, of the just the craziest, most overcranked in terms of style, sort of like <laughs> Japanese seventies movies that I've that I've seen. So that was the only thing I knew about this guy going into this one, and I went, "Yeah, that's this is probably his version of a Street Fighter movie. Like it's just it's a little <laughs> bit goofier, it's a little yeah. bit more playful is is a good word for it, and it's mm -hmm. just it's a it's a little bit more ridiculous um, in 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 some ways that I liked, and in some ways that I went, I I love the original Street Fighter partially because. of of the extreme meets grounded and yeah. this definitely mm -hmm. goes like there's a point in this where it was like almost like a 60s batman episode and i was like what the <laughs> fuck is going on um yeah but 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 to an enjoyable degree for sure yeah, yeah it it yeah. does have like that same kind of like yeah it almost feels like a adam west like 66 batman with like the colors and just the wild situations and characters I had the pleasure. Yeah, well, but what's that? What's that yeah. Mario Bava movie? That's also like Danger Diabolique. Oh, that's what yeah, I'm thinking absolutely. of a little bit. There's yeah, some Danger <laughs> Diabolic energy in this for sure. Uh, I had the pleasure of screening Wolf Guy actually at the review uh, last year for how, like uh, October. They do this. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's always in October. Oh, you, 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 you guys did the Werewolf a thon, full, right? Or, uh, yeah, Full Moon's Eve, I believe they call it. Uh, they, they'll do it like on a you know the night there's a full moon and it's it's like a 12 hour like marathon of like, it starts at noon usually on a Saturday and we'll go until like midnight. And basically every single film, like anyone that wants to participate, any of the film programmers at review will pick a werewolf movie uh, to play. And like, I'm like, well, geez, which one am I going to play? There's not that many like werewolf <laughs> martial arts, <laughs> werewolf films. martial arts. Movies. Uh, it, well, was there another one? I can't I'm just think curious. Of a single, I cannot think of another one. No, okay. Actually, no, this so was there, pretty, there wasn't oh, like you had a okay. choice and you were like, which one am I going to do? So <laughs> the other one. Okay. Honestly, my first pick was actually Brotherhood of the Wolf. 
um, with Mark Dacascus. Oh. And uh, yeah, it's that um, sort of like French Gothic horror about this. Yeah, by the guy who did yeah. the Silent Hill movie, right? The yeah, French yeah, guy? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, I'm totally spacing on his name right now, but I wanted to screen uh, that. Christophe Gans. Yeah, I remember looking this guy up the other day because yeah. he's coming back to do a Silent Hill movie soon. Oh, no so way. that's exciting. Yeah, he also did that Crying Freeman film, uh, which is like pretty, like, I don't know, kind of like Troy Hawk, oh, yeah. Hong Kong inspired and. Um, yeah, pretty interesting director. Um, but yeah, that script, the script, like seeing that wolf guy with an audience was quite an experience. Like, yeah, I would love to do Brother, Brother of the Wolf. I think it's like almost like three hours or two and a half hours to like subject people to that length of a film in an, in an already like 12 hour marathon. I don't know if I can. <laughs> um, if We're going to we slow things yeah. down, folks. You should make that yeah. the midnight one for sure. Yeah. That's the midnight one. See who like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, but 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 have you seen other uh, like like Yamaguchi? Like I couldn't find out much about oh, Yamaguchi's like even like history. Do you know? Do you know much about him? Want, well, I mean, he he's uh, he worked for. T- uh, I, I see he has a series called Delinquent Girl yes, Boss. Yeah, I'm wondering is, um, about yeah. that. <laughs> I was first I was first exposed to uh, the Delinquent Girl Boss series when I I came upon this collection called the uh, the Pinky Violence Collection. Uh, that was um, what a name yeah, it, it's just like this dvd box set that like it came in this like super hot pink uh like sort of like uh puff kind of like leather feeling like case and it was like released by a, a label called panic house um and had movies like the Delinqu- delinquent girl boss uh colon worthless to confess uh girl boss gorilla criminal woman killing melody terrifying <laughs> girls high school lynch law classroom just these i was just like what are these like films and they're referred to as like the sort of pink pinky violence uh kind of films that that to uh toy was kind of putting out around this time um so that's where i first saw i, I think i'd probably seen one of one of yamaguchi's films in this series before i even saw uh haunted turkish bass house and these sister street fighter movies i don't know why i came across this this one i don't know if it was like at uh suspect video back in the day or somewhere but yeah it was a weird thing to find uh he also did um uh uh, Champion of Death, uh, which is uh, also known as Karate Bullfighter, uh, which also features Sonny Chiba, and it's a, this movie's really interesting because it's is actually, Sonny Chiba fighting a bull. Please tell me Sonny Chiba fights a bull. He in that literally movie. does fight a bull in this film. <laughs> Not only does he fight a bull, but th- this the character he plays, uh, Mas Oyama, uh, is a real life uh, Korean Japanese martial artist, and his shtick in his like performance was actually like wrestling a bull to the ground and and this was sunny chiba's this was sunny chiba's teacher and like like mentor uh that actually okay, like like, his, like in real life his real life teacher he, he was a arguably one of the most famous uh practice uh practitioners of of kyokushin karate actually the, he's the kyokushin karate founder uh masayama who's like a pretty controversial figure in his time because he was half korean so i mean maybe that's one element that the street fighter character is uh sort of playing off of being half chinese half chinese and half japanese because he was uh considered like an outcast and uh, a lot of people didn't even want him uh competing in a lot of tournaments because he was uh, half korean um so yeah there's actually a series of films that chiba stars in um based on this character i would i would uh champion of death aka karate bullfighter definitely check that one out God damn! Yeah, what a what an interesting uh, career this guy has had that 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 led him all the way to yeah. Sister Street Fighter, the much more uh, pulpy, colorfully cartoony, uh, and 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 strange and manic version of a Street Fighter movie, which uh, g- gets down to business pretty quickly because we get yeah. introduced right or right away. Um, to our uh, new hero, which depending on which version you watch, she's either Tina or she's Koryu, mm-hmm. um, played by uh, she, Shihomi. I'll, uh, I, I should in- say this up, up front. I almost, I'm, I'm almost certain that I actually ended up watching the more edited edited version. Um, she no, was if, you're, Tina, if you're watching yeah. it, if you're watching it on Tubi, you're definitely watching like a. I mean, I, I looked up the a VHS ver- the street, rip. The, I looked up the version of the Street Fighter on Tubi just to see which one you were watching. I'm like, oh my god, this is just like a VHS rip or some shitty pan and scan. Yeah, well, the 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 Street Fighter, I think, um, uh, they they still had all of the the footage that was supposed to be in it because I double checked that and the timing and everything. But just because I wasn't as familiar with Sister Street Fighter, I I was just like, okay, well, maybe Tubi just didn't line up the proper running time or something because it was only like you know a few minutes off. 
Right, um, right. And then, of course, I, I look up the do some research after I watch the movie. I try to just go in kind of blank. <laughs> And um, and they're like, yeah, there's six minutes of intense gore and blood that's missing from that <laughs> that version. I'm like, son of a bitch. So, um, I mean, I to be honest, I still really enjoyed it as a as a martial arts film, but it was interesting to find. Brandon out. and I are going to be describing some things, and Jamie's going to be like, wait a minute, that, yeah, <laughs> wait, wow, that sounds awesome. I wish I saw that, uh, but. Um, but I, I will say, uh, I know a couple of the things that that are missing. While I was watching it, I was legitimately going to myself like, this feels. Like there's there's a just a little bit of violence. This has been hacked up from, a little yeah. bit, yeah, <laughs> yeah because because so. this had the same thing where they they d- did successful with the X rating for the Street Fighter, mm-hmm. but there's also some markets where they knew that that wouldn't be successful, and they were trying to get into I believe more markets around this time. You can actually see the titles for um, the, <laughs> right. the the films uh, brought up on 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 the wiki that are on for in the UK. It was called Revenge of the Dragon. In Germany, it was called called Die Karate Tiger. <laughs> <We're just laughs> so kind of awesome. Funny. So. So there are some sort of theatrical releases that were cut down in order to get to an R rating. And yeah, the the X rated version is, I believe, the one that Arrow has restored and was the copy that that I found. And yeah, that's it the one I'm going to be watching all, next. That's for sure. OK, so speaking <laughs> it puts of, all that shit back in. Speaking of alternate versions of this film, just because I was looking it up just now, I, there's also a version in 1986 that UK video uh, released where they removed specifically three minutes and 41 seconds of all the footage of her using nunchucks or anyone using nunchucks. Apparently this was actually kind of like a hot topic issue at the time in the UK was uh, everyone was afraid of like nunchucks and like how popular uh, martial mm. arts and like weapons because you can just order this shit from like a comic book catalog. Our, our ordering, kids are getting into you know, nunchucks. No, seriously, they, they were like, okay, we'll release this movie, but we're going to cut out all the nunchuck footage uh, just because this is too dangerous for the youth of uh, England to, to of consume. England. We've, they, they, you know, it's almost like it was on the video nasty list. The British like, are a wonderful people. It's on the nunchuck so nasty list. You know, you got to just edit out all the nunchucks. We can't let audiences see this the country that brought you the video nasty list was like no no nunchucks no nunchucks (laughs) video nasties like wow that's so funny so i would not like to see that version because i mean she uses nunchucks like the the whole opening sequence (laughs) with the credits is her oh yeah she's literally opens on her funky psychedelic score crazy freeze frame images of her flinging nunchucks around the guy that like had to edit this film was just like oh shit i gotta take out all the nunchucks he's like sitting down to take notes he's like oh shit (laughs) (laughs) so many nunchucks i just can't so many nunchucks i can't I can't I can't believe I can't believe it. Um, Well, this one I'll say too. this one gets into its plot like really, really quickly. Like even even the even the opening of the Street Fighter, you get a little bit of time to kind of, you know, see see a cold open of like him and his mission on action. See why people think he's so cool and why he's so respected, why they want to hire him and, you know, all this kind of stuff. We get that intro um, of Koryu at first, and then it's just instantly, 10 seconds later, we're reading in the newspaper that her martial arts trained undercover narcotics agent brother uh, Lee uh, Mansai has gone missing while investigating a uh, company called Central Export that is suspected of being a front for drug trafficking, uh, which they do by, we'll, we'll talk about it at one point, it's smuggling uh, with, via wigs. Uh, it's a very strange way of uh, drug trafficking. Um, <laughs> and we it's see her essentially agree to help to go undercover in his stead, travel to uh, Yokohama from Hong Kong where her traditional uh, sort of style is sort of out of step with the sort of modern 70s Japan and she starts to uh, investigate and get into a series of uh, fights that we'll talk about but the tone right off the bat is just quite a little quite a bit more um, goofy and also uh, I'll say uh, sentimental as well like it it is her like she is a good person who wants to find her brother who's in a bad situation. It's a lot more sentimental and sympathetic of a perspective to join uh, this situation from than being with the ugliest motherfucker <laughs> around that we were just talking about um, with, with with the Street Fighter. Uh, and, and her kind of fights that she gets into are like, you know, an annoying dudes getting aggressive with her at like her uncle's restaurant and her just like humiliating them or berating them, which I do think that her specific way of doing so with a toothpick and flies and like shoving them in their mouths and nose is very funny. Just so oh, like yeah. just completely degrading them and humiliating them. Cause I mean, she's like literally trying to order, what does she order? Like spaghetti 
with chili or something like that. Like she's just trying to have some <laughs> spaghetti. These guys are fucking with her. Like it does not end well for these guys. Yeah. No, she knocks them into fish tanks. She bashes yeah. their heads together. Like it's oh. the kind of like beat you'd see in like an old Western, like bar brawl. <laughs> yeah. Eventually <laughs> the chef actually brings it over the plate and I think she like takes it and smashes uh, someone's face into the, into oh. the plate and stuff. It's so like it, a metal plate like, to like, <laughs> Yeah, okay. and so it has a little bit more of a, a comical tone to it, and and one of my favorite details in this uh, in this sequence was when her friend uh, shows up, and he just seems like almost happy he's like, to. He's not even surprised. With her. He's not even surprised. <laughs> he's just like, oh, Corey's back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, he's like, oh, she's in, in a little this. scuffle. Let me like, join. Oh, just and, like old times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's go for and then they just well, all go well, for yeah, because that, that, that's her uh, her cousin. Her her two right, cousins right, roll right, up: right. Uh, Raiku yeah. and uh, Jiro, who are. Um, uh, obviously, the the children of the uncle who who owns the restaurant, who uh, who also they, they refer to her as like a tomboy because I guess that was like maybe their relationship when they were growing up as as, as kids. And they also do a funny uh, little bit of a gag where after beating the shit out of everyone and immediately just like kicking all these like uh, annoying dudes out of the restaurant, they just like eat alone at the uncle's restaurant and they talk about how like you know kicking ass like works up an appetite, you know. So they're yeah. just they're 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 getting those calories in, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> And you work up a big fight just like dispatching baddies, you know, like she never really got to eat her meal because she flung it at the guy's face, you know, so they're, they're sitting down at the proper <laughs> yeah. dinner. The family that fights together dines together. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're so happy to do it. That was my favorite detail. They're like almost, well, at least the, the cousin that walks in almost has a smile on his face while he's helping her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, I, I, go but, ahead. But, but, but then she gets involved in this actual sort of like espionage just drug dealing sort of like conspiracy movie which is very funny because like the scenes of her and like her family are like the kind of like sentimental sort of like martial arts like uh you know the, 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 there's a little bit of gags to them there's a little bit of yeah. uh you know like like clearly sort of like dance like actual sort of like pageantry yeah. fighting to it and stuff and, and 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 skill to it it reminds me more of like a shaw brothers film in that way yeah. um the and only, then you don't get oh, any, like barely get any of the sentimentality in the street fighter like there's like a like super brief micro moments of it and it's mm -hmm. there's yeah. not yeah th this character is so radically different in terms of yeah and if anything with chiba it's like when those moments happen he immediately undercuts them <laughs> with his character yeah. anyway um whereas he's like check uh, out oh, these dick and balls by the way <laughs> yeah. I, I know we're talking about sister street fighter now but i one thing i forgot to talk about in the street fighter is when his friend mm -hmm. is dying and he just starts like picking his nose he just starts kind of poking at his nose Presumably oh, yeah. to see if he's like alive or not, but you're like, dude, like he's, I don't know, it's just, <laughs> yeah, just yeah, poking his nose and he's like crying, anyways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, that is that yeah. is funny that even in that moment there is kind of like an undercutting to the yeah, uh, yeah. sensitivity of the situation. Well, and, and that's what's interesting about this is that like this leads into a like leans into a little bit more of like a traditional kind of sentimental sort of like martial arts heroism story in that regard, like dramatically. Yeah. But then it will throw in the fucking weird shit where she actually <laughs> is going on like one of the strangest undercover missions a character like this could be asked to go on where she's like going to the strip club mandarin to meet her brother's undercover partner uh contact fang whose yeah, I love how spy she... symbol is a tattoo of a yeah. rose on on her leg and who gets instantly kidnapped by some sort of set some central export goons before she can even talk to her and she's getting into like nifty little sort of like alley fights that are filmed from above to reveal that she's like hovering and like leaping down and there's these very sort she of just like jumps striking. out of nowhere she's basically Batman in this. She just leaps from she the is. shadows. She just pops yeah. up out of nowhere, you know, and just overwhelms. Yeah, and there's these striking, like, canted angle, like, splash panel, almost, like, looking shots and stuff, too. Like, the, the, the acrobatics and the the just, like, the, the, the lighting choices are just so much more uh, almost animated in, in a regard to, uh, to, to this film. But still and with it, the violence there, though, like, when she throws that sickle into that dude's eye in the alleyway, which is a detail oh, yeah. Jamie didn't see, but, you know, he... <laughs> There, there is a lot of she blank, does do that. There's a lot of blank and, there's a lot of blank and you'll miss it moments in this, which is why it, it just it's so rewarding to rewatch every now and then. Like it's oh, it's so much fun. I I just love seeing her move because there's so there's times where like she'll attack someone and like you don't even the person doesn't even know it's been her. Like when she throws the fork at that guy's hand and he's and she just kind of like turns back to the bar like she like wasn't me. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's like so playful and and ah, it's amazing. And she still does have kind of a relentless quality to her like yeah. 
like Chiba did. It's just um, obviously she has she has more honor within her character as we've kind of established. But but you're right. Like th- like she does kind of pop up out of nowhere sometimes, and it feels like they've already sometimes. I think there's a scene much later on where they feel like they've already kind of. Uh, defeated her uh, or at least quieted her down and she comes out of nowhere and they're like, I thought we dealt with her. What the hell is going like, on? So she, she has a relentless the, yeah, quality. The guy says like, she can't be killed. You know? It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's just standing in front of this like flaming truck. Like it's um, right. I love, right. I love when these two guys corner her from both sides in the alley and then she just starts climbing up both walls and they have to oh, like start yeah. climbing up after her to like keep up with her. And then they, the, the fight goes from there to like the roof of this fucking building. And then she, I love how she like, like there's that one guy with like the purple karate gi and like the sickle that he's throwing around. And I love when everyone, when someone has like a, a villain has like a crazy weapon and they try to attack her with it and she just kind of turns it around on them. It, it, it's, mm-hmm. She's just a master at everything. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what primarily adds to the crazy sort of comic booky feel of yeah. this movie is for me, and my favorite maybe detail of the entire movie was the organized league of villains oh run God. by these sort of cigar chomping, sort of like sunglasses and sort of like a bathrobe and or glittery suit drip sort of drug dealer named um, Kazuhaki, yeah. where they, they, they all hang out by the pool on his like munch, mansion, sort of like drug lab that property. Pool. The lab, by the way, literally does look like a mad science lab with like beakers of like green goo and 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 shit like that but they all hang out on his poolside where he trains them like it's like a strange army on an island where like a bond villain would organize henchmen to like kill bond like i was a little i, I just rewatched um from russia with love recently and there's that opening of it where robert shaw is literally like indoctrinated on like the specter island where they're like training the anti-bonds to like oh, do yeah. their shit this is almost exactly like that except all of these henchmen all have extremely comic book unique personalities and costumes and hats so many hats and <laughs> weapons and fight styles which as brandon was kind of pointing out I think during the Street Fighter, which appear announced on screen when they're introduced, the movie will freeze frame, be like, check out this fucking cool guy's outfit and his hat and whatever weapon he's holding. This is here's like, his name. Here's his fighting style. And it's 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 that awesome. Is a te- it's a textbook uh, ma- ma- manga uh, move to mm-hmm. do that. You introduce the character, it's big, splashy title and their fighting style. Like this is like some anime like manga kind of vibes whenever this is happening. I love it. There also feels it, like it's, it, a, it's awesome, but but they also have to have the character explain it too. I lo- I yeah, love too because yeah, the yeah. guy's just like you know you know some buy uh, some rich men buy horses. I uh, keep unusual freaks as pets. Yeah, like he just <laughs> yeah. like has these like freaky martial artists in his employ, and they all just like hang out by this pool while he like kind of makes out with like women occasionally. Like there's that scene <laughs> yeah. where like someone's kind of like testing his you know, gall and like, he's in the middle of sort of like making out with this like bikini clad woman. And then as soon as he gets close to him, he like leaps in the air and does this insane twirl. And he's like in a blue, like terry cloth bathrobe. And when he lands, he's got this crazy like claw thing attached to his hand. It's like, what? Okay. I can kind of see why Mm -hmm. this guy's sort of like the boss, you know, it's, and then the guy, he's so impressed by this movie. He's like, you know what? You're, you're still sharp as ever you win. You know, I'm not, let's not fight. Let's just work together. (laughs) <laughs> I also th- I also think there's something to be said about kind of like how they introduced that one um, school that's more about it, it's like I think they say something of like if you cause suffering you will suffer so they're about peace and harmony and kind of that that honor when it comes to yeah. to martial arts and they seem like the, the way that they're introduced is like this um, the, the shot is uh, the behind the entire class and they're all just sitting down facing a certain way facing the the master essentially and it just feels like they're more in a uh, they're more of a unit there's a unity there yeah. whereas the the bad guys although they're working with each other it, it feels like just such a mix mash of yeah of I mean, of random groups that really at they're the end a mess of, the day, of individual personalities just like you know yeah. whereas yeah, you know these guys gonna, are a collective disciplined group, yeah you so know? it feels like they're not gonna have that um coherent goal in mind that they all agree upon compared to the the good guys in this in this movie i love seeing these students just like sitting there like meditating with their you know sensei and they're they're waxing about you know kempo how it enhances the harmony of the body and the mind like there's a Mm -hmm. there's a philosophy there like it's, it's such a contrast to these other like just unruly eccentric like villains yeah yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which is where we're also introduced to um, Sunny Hibachi or Sunny Chiba's uh, character, because during that bit where they're trying to um, the uh, company is trying to kidnap the uh, brother's contact who she was meeting at the strip club, that scene is actually interrupted because the movie's so fast paced. We kind of have to jump around like crazy. Yeah. But yeah. Sunny Chiba interrupts that entire set piece by just jumping also out of like the dark roof alley he just like pulls up he appears <laughs> out of nowhere he starts kicking everyone's ass he hijacks their car and their abductee and i love that bit too where he like punches a guy like 10 or 15 times in the face like in a matter of seconds he's like duh, 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 duh. Mm-hmm. um and it just turns out that he's just the coolest guy ever he's like an ex racer and bodyguard and he's a student of the uh shorinji uh, Kempo uh, temple just like her brother wasn't where and that and that's where we get it we get introduced where she's just like hey you know I I see that this guy is like training here on on your property and like that's the guy who kidnapped the the contact but it turns out he's a good guy and he's yep. here to help and he's actually on his own mission to help find the brother and is actually keeping the contact safe at his girlfriend's uh, ballet school where he's he's uh hiding her which turns into this like sort of like double set piece where we get a mid film flashback of her brother yeah. going missing which is a pretty crazy sequence of like dish dutch angles and zooms and he's like infiltrating the company while fang is like distracting at the boss i guess with like sex yeah. and there's like great use of sort of like wide angles and sort of mirrors and security cameras as the boss is like noticing the bro- the brother infiltrating mm-hmm. and then comic books he presses the big fucking alarm button triggers a giant sort of like subterranean fight against a one of the uh, sort of p- crazy villains who is a dual wielding nunchucks dude who just mostly just does the nunchucks and but he also screams a lot yeah um oh, yeah. that's his thing and, is uh, like two nunchucks at the same time and screaming that's his signature thing <laughs> <laughs> what an identity <laughs> so awesome <laughs> and, he, and, he, and, he ca- and, and they do capture and imprison the brother and also give him a nearly lethal injection of heroin to keep him sort of like addicted and sort of trapped um, in the property. It's, um, yeah, it's such a gross, like unsavory trope in a lot of these Japanese like exploitation films is like just people being like, you know, addicted to heroin or given heroin. So they, they're just mm-hmm. like trapped or like uh, it's it pops up a we, lot in these films. We did recently see that a little bit too uh, with an American film, uh, Ricochet, I guess. Oh, really? Which is uh, oh. which is interesting. But that <laughs> what, what being, I'm I'm saying that it, it is like we, we were talking about just how absolutely unhinged that movie is and how you well, don't and, really and it, see it was being things, recognized so. as a trope in the film because John Lithgow yeah. is actually using it against Denzel's Wash- Washington's character who is like an actual sort of like respected political figure and yeah. he goes well if I get him hooked on heroin and make him look like he like had sex and got an STD from a prostitute that it would actually ruin his reputation so it's actually a guy using the trope of like what if a black man did did drugs and was like you know mm-hmm. was uh, sexually active active or whatever you know and it, 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 he was trying to weapon do like an image war type thing which speaks to brendan's point that like they were trying to sort of symbolically say something here about drugs yeah. and, and and there's just you know it is creepy like that, that there is such a it, it is skin crawling to watch that like lack of consent as a needle is put in someone's arm and, oh, and gosh, like it, yeah. it it's it is just a terrifying thing but yeah, surgical horror has always been the kind of stuff that's kind of like freak me out like against yeah. your own will like that kind of stuff oh totally and and it, but with this film it is again kind of interesting to have those kind of uh, tonal choices and then you also it's have a whiplash this, like, with the sentimental yeah, stuff right yeah <laughs> or not even and some yeah sentimental stuff absolutely but then like you were mentioning kind of the bond uh kind of villainous kind of things where where the guy is looking at him through a television screen so clearly he has like cameras <laughs> in his hallway but the the camera itself doesn't feel like it's a security camera um he has a button that's just on one side of his bed that causes all everybody to come out and and hurt the the brother yeah. like a, like it's like a so magic gold finger but gold finger got sean connery fucking just like addicted to smack <laughs> yeah, and it's, it ruined his life and just slowly killed him you it's know it's so <laughs> wild that it's so equally gritty and kind of wacky at this at the same time it's 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 an interesting double tone <laughs>
Yeah, because you'll go from an image like that of like the brother just like being just like, you know, really, you know, sort of grossly treated. Yes. And then you'll get into, you know, like the the more like fun action stuff of the ballet studio being overrun by mm-hmm. those goons who like, I guess they're 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 the one villain hammerheads goons. So they all have like black cones. They're so <laughs> committed right. to these black cones. Like it's like, guys, this is our thing. But also not because really the hard. second they start fighting, they go, this is impractical. Yeah. And I, take guys, I, I can't. <laughs> see i have no peripheral vision can we just like maybe take this off when we actually fight people like i get that it's like intimidating when we roll up to a dojo and like yeah i would shit my pants if it looks like, cool these, it looks sick like the shot of us walking in looks i would sick, shit my but... pants if these guys walked into my dojo but like if they didn't take them off when they initiated the the combat like the fight then i would be like oh these guys are fucking idiots like let's go that's why <laughs> the, that's why the, yeah. that's why the dance class teacher is so confident because she's like these guys are going to fight with those things on like, let's fucking kick these guys ass. Like <laughs> we go. got, we, we got this. Let's go girls. Down, down, yeah. down, 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 down. Sorry, yeah, I just did a little Shania Twain drop there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And it's, I mean, and the thing is with, um, with, uh, uh, she homie, like she's incredibly skilled as a martial artist. Like it, it's, it's pretty incredible how many really she's in every, uh, scene where there's fighting essentially. Cause it yeah. is really focused on her. And yeah, she only, gets a lot of huge like flips and like arm twists that I, she's doing. I like that yeah. bit where she kicks the dude so hard his head gets stuck in the wall. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh a, yeah. yeah. And I will nice say touch. like there's a there's a precision to her that I really mm-hmm. appreciate and respect. Um, obviously with Shiva, it's just like that animalistic you know noises he's yeah. making and all the contortions. Well, you kind of miss the entertainment quality of which it is a funny bit, because Shiva was incredibly but, athletic and could have done more stuff. Like oh, he yeah. has the skill to do it. It's just funny yeah. that they picked a movie for him that was like, no, no, no. What if you just like fucking well, tore he, a throat? He out? often yeah. like yeah. over. He'll oversell his punches and kicks where it's like a big like swinging like like mm-hmm. hook or he'll do like a crazy k- kick where like he'll his whole body will like dip to the ground and then just he sort of does this crazy like hook kick to someone like he really uh sells the the movement in such an exaggerated way whereas Etsuko just yeah there's this this amazing calculated precision and this graceful yeah. like agility like her kicks are arguably more impressive uh, than than she was because there's just like way mm-hmm. more flexibility and and form and just yeah like she mm-hmm. really gets the targets like it's it's kind of incredible to see like it's so dynamic yeah yeah technically speaking she's just she's absolutely <laughs> yeah incredible it's way more um, like light and acrobatic and just mm-hmm. yeah just the economy of movement is is so captivating like yeah. It's honestly the kind of thing you more or less expect like when, when you want to specifically go and watch like a martial arts or like a karate it, film. Yes. If yeah. anything, the, the, if anything, the street fighter is the weird yeah, one, so for, much, you know, really downplaying all of that stuff for the pure sort of like brute ugliness yeah, that it was going exactly. for. But that's what's kind of so funny so, about it is that to like then a, to then spin off of that and be like, we're going to go back to, yeah. you know, more technically and athletically yeah. impressive um, fighting and also way more ridiculous um um villains that she's gonna kick the shit out of mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot more like uh takes where you see them in like you know sort of like a full shot and they're they're fighting there's like kind of less cuts and like really quick edits like you do get a bit of that like it's not quite shaky cam but like with the dutch angles and everything like there's scenes where like especially where they're fighting in like interiors like you know someone's like uh, headquarters or something like that or living room like the, the camera is kind of like bopping up and down and like these this Mm -hmm. weird uh movement but at the same time you're getting it's tracking with all the action you're getting everything it's almost like the camera's like ducking underneath someone being thrown across the room or or a punch being thrown at it's it's just so uh yeah it's it's incredible yeah and they'll and they still have like moments of um it's not just pure fast-paced action choreography they do still they still do have a moments where they channel that kind of power like i was i was actually just watching a scene um and some like she does a big scream and then oh. does this giant you, chest are, kick and the guy's gets his head stuck through a poster in the wall and amazing. then just gets his head awesome. stuck in the wall it's awesome so there, there is still stuff like that it's just a little more cartoonish in it's in it's uh, tone the way it does yeah it, but although, it's awesome. although my, my my favorite cartoonish details are the ones where they'll just all of a sudden you know she'll go into the room to go and try to protect you know sort of the contact fang who they're all protecting in the ballet studio and she will just out of nowhere get killed by a poisonous blow dart gun 
um, <laughs> which is, uh, or, or I guess, I guess you could just say blow gun. Cause you are, uh, uh, blow. I forget what you call this thing. Yeah, Cause he, he literally just blows into it, shoots her. And it's just this dude in like a ridiculous oh. costume running across like yeah. rooftops. And he literally just sprints away. Yeah. You know, like he's got a shield. <laughs> like it's just so it looks like this it's weird awesome. sort of like somewhat like African or Mayan shield. Like it's like I don't yeah. know what it's trying to reference. He's got like a weird mohawk thing. I'm like, yes. I can't I remember if the cause that when they do the introductions to all the the different factions and warriors or whatever, I can't remember the one that they say he's from. If um he's, it's um his but, his his style is uh hold on, I'm just looking at it right now. Blow dart. <laughs> it's uh, okay. His name is Tatoso Takasago Ryu Blowgun. His style is just blow, blowgun. <laughs> His style that's is awesome. blowgun. It is blowgun. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's yeah. awesome. It's just uh, that's that's. I his missed stats. that detail. That's so funny. Yeah, he's just like a blowgun. Had, would, I, I want to go to blowgun school. Yeah, that's what, hell yeah. You know? I want to become uh, an expert. He's an expert blowgun. <laughs> a black yeah. belt and blowgun. Got a black belt. Yeah, black so they'll just throw blowgun. again. They'll they'll just like cap <laughs> off like a like a like a very graceful, very like wonderful martial arts sequence, and they'll just throw in like a crazy yeah. detail like that, and then they'll be yeah. like, okay, then we're on to, we're on to the next thing. She's like teaming up with like the promising sort of female student at the temple, um, Emmy Hayakawa. She's great. Um, I, I really like, actually enjoyed her. In she this is film. really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and she, uh, tries to infiltrate the property at the sort of the middle point, um, of, of the film resulting in this like rickety wooden bridge, like sort of like seaside fight that she gets into, which is with, yeah. with Hammerhead, um, which is a, a, a great little fight scene and really accentuates kind of like the, the location work that they do for the big finale on where this guy's like actual sort of like Island, like compound is. And it also results in one of my favorite things in any 1970s movie, which is a, a giant dummy shot of uh, a body just falling to its death into the water in the way that this uh, case does, uh, which is, w- w- although it's so funny that it's like an Etsuko like fake out. Cause I'm like, yeah, yeah they're going to kill the sister street fighter 40 minutes into her own movie where the hammerhead just punches <laughs> her off. And then I do love too, that he's just like, you know, if the impact didn't kill her, then the sharks did, you know, yeah, we don't need to find the body. We're good. We're good. You know? yeah, definitely. And she's totally fine in the next scene, by the way, and is just helping Emmy like burn down a warehouse. On the yeah, other she side doesn't of town, even need like, like a minute later. She doesn't even need like a recovery <laughs> montage or anything where she has to yeah. like, lay, lay low for a few days and you know recuperate and, and sort of. Yeah, I was like, I did not buy that death at all, but for some reason, all of the villains immediately did, and then they're all immediately shocked when they're like, "Wait, <laughs> she, she burned down what? Where?" <laughs> yeah, they, they were pretty shook. <laughs> I do like um, that. There's there's little moments where she kind of they, they show her doing more over the top things instead of the the kind of grounded martial arts like there's one shot where she literally jumps just flat foot over a 10 15 foot fence and just like front flips over it and then i oh, think it's actually awesome. right before the bridge scene but um i do like that they i like the one where she jumps like out jumps off the staircase too on the exterior of like the rundown building where they try to entrap her oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah the, totally. The, the physics in this film definitely work a bit different because, like, you know, the Street Fighter, arguably everything. I mean, there's he's some doing, wire shit in this film, which we'll talk about. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This just like having like crazy, like, anime sky battles where they're like. It just comes out of oh, fucking nowhere. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah. God. Yeah. Um, yeah. The physics definitely get pretty. Like, it's not like wire foo or anything like that, but like moments where she, yeah, she right. just like leaps over the fence or something like You don't get that as much with uh, uh, the Street Fighter, I find. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it's it's very blunt in that sense. Yeah. This one has a little bit more of that uh, agility kind of yeah. martial arts. Yeah, um, yeah, but it, but it does result in a cool scene where Hammerhead is uh, so infuriated that he didn't kill her that he launches an assault on the temple, and he has one of my favorite lines in the movie, which is when he goes up and he's like, you know, I thought karate was like about spirit and discipline, but you guys are like using these tools like gang members. You know, he's actually yeah. very upset that yeah. this this idea that like he's a you know a drug empire criminal with a bunch of ridiculous you know, sort of eccentric villains. He's like the idea that like people from like a, a, a just a, a martial arts drama are getting involved in his movie is literally pissing him off. <laughs> He's mm-hmm. like, stick, stick to your fucking realm. And it's kind of an explicit sort of central contradiction of the movie, which if it has like any ideas, it is like the difference between this kind of traditional discipline of the temples and the schools versus this kind of extravagant, wealthy sort of corruption that is resulting in this sort of like modern comic book sort of drug trafficking 
colliding kind of uh, the, the elements like these two worlds are are uh, colliding a little little inelegantly yeah. but definitely to a to a very I, uh, yeah. humorous degree i love that like the two sides to practicing martial arts at this extremely high level of skill brings you either to a place of like you know very traditional uh you know uh stuff like you see in these dojos versus just these guys that are just basically this part of like this martial arts criminal cult empire just, like, it's just <laughs> yes so those excessive. are your options those are your two options if you if you want if you want to if you want to get paid to do this shit yeah. <laughs> you can either work at a dojo or you could become part of this like fucking drug kingpin's empire I, it's it's wild this is yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you and, 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 and get your ass kicked yeah. by sunny chiba yeah. and utsuko uh Sh- Sh- shihomi which i wanted to say the the poster for this is so funny the fact that it is identical to the street fighter like it's like it had it's, to have been the same, the same artist. it's got to have been the same it's the same artist, artist. it's sunny but sunny chiba doesn't have the leather jacket he's just shirtless now he's just punching yeah, yeah. More he's like lost says, the leather jacket and it, <laughs> yeah and it's <laughs> some, somewhere punch, yeah. and, Sunny Chiba's back and Sue uh, Shiomi's got him. Yeah, he's, she, he's she's a got one him. man army. Yep. Yeah, she's yeah. got his back. Yeah. You know, he's a one man army and she's a one woman death squad, That's which is awesome. such a funny pitch for this movie because it's it's not exactly what the movie is. No, <laughs> not I was really. really a, yeah. Yeah, Chiba it's not does. even really a sequel to the Street Fighter. It's really not like Sunny Chiba's back playing the Street Fighter. He's not back playing Terry Segui, right. right? Like it's just, just he's he's kind of hanging out in a dojo that she also hangs out at. Yeah, the the poster kind of makes it sound like it's going to be like Lethal Weapon or something like that, and they're going to have like equal screen time and kind of partner up and and there's moments of that for sure. But um, I think the I mean the main focus seems to be uh, Shahomi. So um, yeah, and I do and I did like that. I like that they use Chiba kind of sparingly it's like when they need that that extra power they throw him on screen you know yeah they, um, they, they have a scene where he like kicks the shit out of like hammerhead and his dudes at, at the dojo and puts yeah. them in their place but you know it's not like hugely part of the plot where you know koryu is the one who is being um you know entrapped which by the way the entrapment method is a little severe uh the bit mm-hmm. where they take like koryu's cousin uh and they basically like sexually assault her in front of the uncle until like oh, the uncle calls her agrees. to like, yeah, y- yeah. Till he calls her to like go where she's going. I was like, that's, that's another kind of like tonal thing where it's like in the street fighter movie, I actually was like, that wasn't tone breaking because he's such right. an ugly, disreputable dude in this movie. I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, what the fuck yeah, is and for going me, on? For me too, at least like with you guys, the version that you saw, you had still the violence and the, the blood shots and the gore and all that stuff. Right. But so it really of came in nowhere. So she's for you. already yeah. she's even more <laughs> tame for me at this point. So when the the like the sexual assault kind of blackmail stuff started popping up, I'm like, damn, this feels way different uh, compared to when I'm watching something like that in The Street Fighter with Chiba. Um, so yeah, I definitely noticed. <laughs> yeah, it hits a bit different yeah. in this series. Yeah, it's a bit more. Yeah. It just feels so yeah. much grittier, I guess, because everything mm-hmm. else feels lighter. And so mm-hmm. when you have those moments, you're like, oh, my oh, shit. Like, it, it really feels like it's out of left field comparably. To yeah, well, and, 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 and honestly, the pitch of the movie is, you know, you're feeling a little bit better about the treatment of women in one of these movies. And then just, sure. yeah, out of nowhere, you're like, oh, no, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> we're back. We're back to it. You know, you guys were doing so well, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> with, with Xiaomi. Um, <laughs> but uh but it, it it does result in a um you know Some a great finale writing. like where well, it does like 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 I thought the whole because not even the finale I, I mean I was kind of considered like the whole last like almost like thirty minutes of the movie is just so much fighting set piece after set piece after set piece and I was yeah. like kind of I I my my notes are filled with question marks and like I was <laughs> like I couldn't I couldn't keep track of all of the various things that were were happening like her uncle and her cousins. Uh, and Emmy were getting into a fight with like the Flintstone ass, like kickboxing goons <laughs> right, to like sixties yeah. Batman music while she's getting attacked by the dude with, with nunchucks and like a dilapidated, like rundown building, which gets into that one part where he and her are both just doing the Sunny Chiba showdown where they're oh, both yeah. just they're showing both off posturing. what they can do with nunchucks. She like raises yeah, her arms so up, sick. starts <laughs> screaming and like, oh wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. One, of my, one of my favorite shots of the whole movie is when they're doing a fight. It's um, It might be her and the, the nunchuck guy, but they're in kind of like a cement 
tunnel almost and they're just silhouetted and the camera is actually quite far from them so it's almost like a distant shot as they're fighting uh and it, it was just i don't know it was it was something that we hadn't seen in these these other martial arts movies it was almost a more i don't know it had like an artistic style to it that i that i wasn't seeing with the more medium close up shots and uh um just the stationary wide angle shots so that you could see all the choreography. It was cool that they were starting to implement like silhouettes and things like that. So I really liked this really just this last like 25 minutes of fighting is wild. It's so entertaining. It is, it is, it is ridiculous because the whole set piece is her just breaking into the base in a sort of like shipment box, finding her obviously like strung out um, brother and having to fight, uh, you know, fight her way out. And her brother obviously just like actually dies. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't even really save him. So it's this really tragic thing. And the rest of it is like, can she even escape this place? And can she fight every single person on her way out? And the one thing I'll say about the finale of this is that like I really like the one in the Street Fighter because it does have that sort of momentum of him taking guy after guy after guy and you know creating this pile behind him and I thought the filmmaking and Chiba are really good there's something to be said about the fact that there is a distinguishing factor in this that each villain has such a unique look and personality that you can actually really tell them apart and each sequence like you could go and you could be like which one was your favorite like fight in this in this section where I feel like I could do that a little bit less with the Street Fighter because I'm like, oh, I yeah. love the dude. He punches and he vomits. Yeah, I'm like that's more, the dude who he punches and he vomits, you know, it's like, whereas moments. here it's like there's this great I guy can, with the, the, the guy with the harpoon gun and like the huge oh, yeah, like, the yeah. big yeah. black hat, hat and, and spectac- coat, but he's got like the white dress shirt and gloves. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, this it's guy awesome. Has a, it's a big look. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's an awesome look. (laughs) I loved it when he. This is the moment that he comes in because I think he even has this kind of cool introduction shot where they're in an office or something, and the mirror. There's like a painting that flips into a two way mirror, and he comes up the stairs. It's fucking. It's a really cool introduction, and his style is awesome. Might might be the coolest character introduction in this in a in a movie full of amazing cool character introductions. Yeah, it's it's just so smooth. Like I wasn't yeah. expecting uh, just the. It, it, I mean, it's not the same effect, but it just reminded me of like a, the reveal in Female Scorpion right. uh, Prisoner, where it's like they do that that kind of stage turn. Yeah. But this one was just kind of a reveal from a painting to a two way mirror, and it's a. Uh, it was just nice. It was awesome. I, I, I was almost ex- I was almost expecting this guy's weapon to be his hat. Like I thought he was gonna like. <laughs> yeah throw the hat and it would be like sharp on the edges like like kung lao totally kung like odd job <laughs> yeah, of Bond. yeah. Well, i mean it's, yeah, it's totally. cool he's got it's cool he's got the harpoon gun too that's cool mm-hmm. the harpoon gun is yeah. is is very awesome he yeah. does make i will say he does make a a crucial mistake when he's oh, yeah. fighting <laughs> show crucial mistake. where he's like i'm just gonna toss this because i'm he well, tosses I, I don't know if it's honor but he's signature like weapon. <laughs> Yeah, oh, he's yeah, like, yeah, I'm going to toss my signature <laughs> weapon so I can have this kind of one-on-one. Yeah. And it's so funny because she just quickly's like, that was dumb, rolls onto the ground, yeah, yeah. grabs the harpoon, and shoots him in the chest. She shoots, again, turning <laughs> the, the person's weapon on themselves. You know? I was going to say, yeah. almost every single person yeah. she kills in this, she uses their own yeah, weapon against them because of that bit where she does that entire like white hallway fight of, of goons that ends with the boss with the big like purple robe and like eye patch, who also is a really cool sort of sudden character introduction. Mm-hmm. And he's the one it's who good. has like the uh, he he has like the side daggers, right? Like the little the like almost like trident. Oh pointing. yeah. Um, and uh, she and, and Jamie, I guess you didn't get to see the bit where she literally stabs him. She de- mm-hmm. while flipping over top of him like diving oh style. God, yeah. She takes one of his blades and shoves it yeah, in the a, top a of his side, head, which yeah. gushes blood <laughs> everywhere. Oh, yeah. like a glorious. geyser kind of thing. Yeah. It's yeah. Absolutely oh hell glorious. yeah! I gotta watch. I'm just gonna rewatch it and like skip through. Watch the come, six minutes of yeah. violence that I missed. <laughs> yeah, it's. Wait, are you in Toronto, Jamie? No, unfortunately, no, I'm a couple right. hours out. Right, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I was gonna say you could just come to the screening on the 16th next month. <laughs> That's right. If you yeah. want to yeah. see what Jamie didn't see, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there it is. Brandon's yeah. screening is the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's see well, all the crazy ultra yeah. violence, which is because I'll, I'll be honest, even up until, but even watching the unrated version, part of me when I didn't know why this was an X-rated movie until this finale, because <laughs> I was like, holy fuck, the finale goes crazy. I mean, you can't get more X-rated and like horror-y, in my opinion, sure. than when she she twists. Oh my. God. A dude's head clean around his body and he slowly walks backwards down the steps like the, what um, the fuck? 
Yeah, like that, uh, I'm trying to remember, like. God yeah, damn it, Freddy, he Freddy got do, fingered. Yeah, if yeah. you ever seen that bit where he's oh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what where this guy looks like. But, but but his but his, <laughs> yeah, but 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 his neck has been literally twisted around. It like looks would, really you know, good. Like it, I know literally they just put, I know literally they just put his suit on backwards. But I don't know. He really sells it like well. Oh like, man. Uh, that's killer. I, yeah. yeah I'm, and then, I'm and then all the other movie. villains watch this is like goon yeah, walking and down all, towards them all, with his head turned around and they're all like, <laughs> what the, the fuck? It's the exact <laughs> moment where they realize like anyone that's still alive is now completely fucked. Like we're all going to yeah. die. Yep. <laughs> you know, like, we're, She's on a rampage. Yeah. yeah. They're like, maybe we shouldn't like have strung her upside yeah. down yeah. over like a uh, spike pit or whatever <laughs> they do to her at one point when they capture her, which is funny because it's, again, it's so sort of cartoony where yeah. she's like literally trapped in like a, she, she falls down a trap door yeah. and then she, she escapes it by using candle fire to like burn her way out of like the bondage that she's in. Oh, and then she right, punches yeah. the one woman onto the spikes. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that she isn't the one who 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 falls onto them, and then that that's what starts her whole rampage. Where goon by goon, eccentric villain by villain, she's gonna gush blood out of your head. She's gonna yeah. twist your fucking neck around. She's gonna, you know, she's going off. This is this is where <laughs> she starts to go into like sort of like that that Terry Seguri berserker mode, where she's like, okay, you're now you're just a <laughs> killing machine. You're a killing machine, and that's all you do. This is your one purpose. It's incredible. It's almost yep, like Sonny Chiba even briefly yeah. shows back up to do his bit where he sticks the fingers into a man's like eye socket and smells the blood or whatever. Or is it his gut? I can't remember in this. He definitely puts, <laughs> he his, fin- he puts his fingers inside a man and, and smells them after and smells that's, them. That's yeah, they were like <laughs> they were moves. like, that's a nod for the real street fighter heads yeah, right there. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> whenever Sonny Chiba penetrates a man with his fingers and s- smells them out, that's, <laughs> that's a profound moment. <laughs> That's a signature move. Yeah, it is. And, so and, and this this part of the movie does get just extremely bloody and athletic and more so than even like the, the rest of the movie, which has been fun since. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they, the, the finale does really just like take the whole thing uh, over the top. Sunny Chiba hitting hammerhead so hard into a mirror that all the broken pieces stab into his face oh, and he dies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Koryu gets to fight the big the big boss, which I do think is funny that Sonny Chiba is literally like, I can hold on to this guy. You go do your boss fight. You go yeah, do yeah. your enter the dragon boss is, fight where he's going to whip moment. out the claw. And the, yeah, yeah. And the bat filled tunnel girl. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> everyone kind of gets their moment in this in this final show. Like everyone kind of takes down this one specific baddie. Like it's it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Emmy gets to take a guy down. There's, it is there's, really there's, there's some. It is really cool too. Like you were mentioning, just the almost horror elements. Like when she gets, um, it's like she's hanging upside down in this kind of dungeon-looking area. But then the yeah, that fight in the cobwebbed stone tunnel, like that yeah. is such a. It, it feels so out of nowhere, and it feels like you're in Dracula's castle all of a sudden yeah. that they're fighting in. It becomes um, like God. Like there's literally bats flapping around yeah. in this scene. There's bats <laughs> flying around cobwebs. What what movie is this? <laughs> yeah, and then and then they fight through that that <laughs> weird like Dracula tunnel into yeah. just where the okay. sea is, and then they're on this like fucking cliffside fight. It's just it's wild. When when Hammerhead comes out and he's just all of a sudden shirtless with these like Beetlejuice <laughs> pants and like a silver chain in the claw, like, I was like scared. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why is he? It looks it's just so startling, and the way she reacts to it, she's like generally like perplexed, like what. What are you? Yeah. Why are you dressed like yeah. this? What are you like? like, like <laughs> We've so so deep down the <laughs> rabbit hole. It's like, uh, <laughs> uh, I just found that particular uh, like reveal just very jarring and amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and they and get this, into a nice little sort of like mountain fight. Yeah, He's like yeah. slicing his way through netting. They do that the bit where they both leap prop, into the yeah. air using the wires. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, amazing, amazing climactic battle. It, it's just like that classic like anime battle where like two characters just like jump up in the air and like, you know, it, just it, yell at each other. Yeah, they're yelling <laughs> at each other. They're they're grappling. They're they're blocking. It's just they're in the air for an impossible amount of time. And it just yeah, they just completely sell it. And you can you can really see the black wire like you can see the wire a lot in some of these shots, especially with this like you know amazing restoration. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the things with these restorations. <laughs> you can't hide certain things you you could before, um, but it just works. There's oh. yeah, and I do like that. It's it, it feels like you know they have the exchange in the air, and it's it's almost like she just gets on top, and that's kind mm-hmm. of what causes him to to 
to dial these. Maybe maybe there's well, a different. Well, hold on. Hold, yeah, well, I was gonna I, say. Hold on. Before, before we do this, Jamie, tell us beat for beat what happens in they, your version because I want to know how oh, they yeah, cut geez. around this. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I'm curious as to what actually happens here. Basically, what happens is they you know they start fighting on kind of the the rocky cliff side, um, and um, they they you know the water's going up it's they they have an old they're on like an old ship at a certain point he's he's kind of cutting through the netting and all that and then eventually they they get into the air like we were talking about and they have like a a physical exchange and then she kind of lands on top of him and it almost appears as if he's been like crushed or it broke his face or neck or something like that and then sunny returns to tina um you know, it, it kind of gets a, a little bit of a wrap up. Essentially, she looks at, at into the sun. Oh wow! So, yeah. so 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 they go, they land, and he just died. He's just he yeah, was dead. They, so I, he yeah, just the like way they, the, the, way the, the they, fall or something in the air happened, and he just died. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to know what happens like, to him? Because it's yeah, insane yeah. what actually happens to him. Which to. is that when when he lands on the ground, he lands with his own iron claw from Enter the Dragon stuck into his abdomen. And then he gets up and as he gets up to like show her what has happened, because it was clearly like, you know, probably wasn't deliberate. It was just like he fell and he landed awkwardly on his claw Mm -hmm. and uh, he tries to like yank it out. And it is full Lady Snowblood blood oh, geyser, yeah, blood geyser. all oh, over her just a pure, and over wow. everything. <laughs> and he's yanking it out like he's almost and, 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 killing and, and, himself in yeah. a way. He's kind of he doesn't fully even yank it out. Like he starts to yank it out. And that's when the geyser of blood starts to squish out. And he's like, oh, shit. Maybe yeah. I'm and it's just like stuck yeah. in there. And he's just leaking blood everywhere. And it literally you get like blood like oh, spraying you know her. Like Dude, that's so, OK. This is so funny. This is all coming together for me now because <laughs> the scene. So when you get that scene of her landing on him um it's you know it, it establishes that the fight is over so i you, you as an audience you're just like okay he must have like broke his neck crushed his face a little lackluster but okay i had a good time um but then when when chiva comes up and and starts talking to her she is covered in blood so i was like <laughs> you're like where did that come from <laughs> yeah i'm like holy what shit did I, I didn't know so- that crushing blow was that bloody <laughs> Um, and so now that that all makes sense and that's very funny to me. So mm-hmm. thank you for enlightening me. <laughs> there you go. We should do this more often where we should watch different cuts of the yeah. movie so we can just describe it and see, and, and <laughs> see how missing? the censors worked around it. They were like, yeah, what if he just fell to his death? I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It did. I will say it felt like I, th- that was a big moment where I felt like it was missing a little something just because of all the other shit we've seen. That's more. You, you came in ready to critique it. You know, you guys could have done something a little more creative there. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know? But in fact, they <laughs> yeah. killed it. So, you know, my bad. Um, I'm going to watch the right version next time. But it, I, I do. I mean, in a way, I'm glad I did because it, it was interesting to see just the differences and in, in how it made me feel versing the grittiness of the Street Fighter. Um, so. And, and honestly, the, the the kind of lack of blood and violence that my version had did still kind of connect with her as a character. So it, it, it for the most part, it made sense. There were just a couple yeah, moments. Yeah, she doesn't where I was seem like, like a character who would be having fight sequences as vicious as yes, Sunny Chiba in the original exactly. Street Fighter film. That's for sure. Which is honestly part of the country, like kind of the you know what kind of made this a little bit fun for me. Yeah, sure. Which was that like it's 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 a little bit. Um, like sillier and kind of stranger um, and honestly even a little bit more like kind of confusing Um, (laughs) but when it all builds to this like big finale and it really just goes for it all the eccentric animated qualities really pay off in the finale and if so if uh, so I recommend sticking (laughs) with it if you're feeling like it's a little bit you know sort of like it's it's not necessarily nailing the combination of like a, a more sentimental sort of traditional kind of martial arts heroine meets a uh, fucking ridiculously exploitation fucking comic book supervillain shit. Yeah. You know, at a, at a certain point, the, 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 it, the finale sells it. Like, cause I went in being a little bit like unsure about that. And then the mix of it at the end was where I yeah. went, okay, no, this was, that, this is entirely worth it. Entirely. Worth also it. <laughs> like the, that cool one hour and 25 minute runtime is also like, yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, awesome. it's, I mean, you can't complain there. Yeah. I was actually going to open this. I forgot, but open this episode up by applauding you for choosing two movies that were 90 minutes and 85 minutes. I just, I love you for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I was into that too. 
This is this is this is how you get reinvited, and this is how you become an all time legend on the show is by just picking ninety minute movies, not being the person that picks a two and a half hour movie. I don't remember who the last person was who did it, but Meg. we called them out. I'm pretty sure I won't ever. Was it Meg? Yeah, I won't, Meg. I won't ever do you like that, guys. Don't worry. No. All right. <laughs> Luckily, I, I guess too that. with the martial arts movies, which is usually what you'd be bringing on, I guess, is um, a lot of them are just like 80 to 90 minutes. It's kind of the... Well, and 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 luckily, we've already taken away his ability of picking a King Who film because we've already done... <laughs> oh, that's uh, true. That's right. true. We, we, we've already done a, a Touch of Zen, so... Yep. yep. <laughs> so that's, a, that's a long one. That's a very long... I think I actually listened yeah. to that episode. Yeah, that was a good one. I love Touch of Zen oh, so much. Oh, yeah, yeah Touch of Zen a wonderful is... wonderful movie. Yeah. yeah, another like martial arts film that it's has... almost the exact same as Sister Street Fighter, if you... It has those it. gothic <laughs> elements, too, you know? Like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Um, I don't know if we really talked about this movie's writer, uh, Norofumi Suzuki, uh, throughout the film. I, no. Like, no. I, man, like, he's also a really, like, proficient, like, director, writer guy. Like, he's, he's made a ton of stuff. Like, he's done a... Uh, uh, Sex and Fury, uh, which is incredible. That also stars oh, uh, Christina Lindbergh from uh, Thriller, A Cruel Picture. Uh, definitely, oh, okay. oh, oh. I really recommend uh, checking that one out. Uh, it's it's incredible. Um, he the also Transgressor, did, I see here too, seems to yeah. have good reviews. Oh, nice. yeah. Uh, School of the Holy Beast is like a really uh, these some of these oh, titles bad. are unbelievable. Yeah, Terrifying yeah. Girls High School Lynch Law Classroom. It's wild. <laughs> I do. I sometimes Girl Boss <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> Just I love really, that. I love the way some of the, these titles like translate. It just like it's it's just kind of almost like like uh, how some of those Giallo titles are just like you know your vice is a, a locked door. In my, yeah, whatever you know. There's one here I, I see love that shit. Terrifying girls high school. Yeah, uh, women's violent classroom. <laughs> yeah, put that on your uh, girl boss blues queen bees counterattack. These guys were cooking. <laughs> I were, love it. They were yeah. cooking with gas. Night. Yeah. 1970s goddamn what a wild time right. Right. yeah if we're if we're uh maybe pivoting towards the reductive rating round on uh sister street fighter here though because we are going a little long um this is uh the, the, i i like this a lot i kind of want to give this another go yeah because this landed closer to like the like the really high three territory for me but it's mm-hmm. but like it, it is i think people are going to get more out of it um i think i just went in a little bit confused because like most people probably when they first saw it, it was kind of like it was pitched as like a spinoff to the Street Fighter. And it's very different than the original Street Fighter. And yeah. like like that movie is so and there's something about it that I like again, the sort of gleeful relentlessness and cruelty of that first film and how and like but despite the fact that it's very tonally consistent, though, mm-hmm. like it's just like the, the style of the film very much matches the sort of rabid sadism of Sonny Chiba's character in that film. And this one is just going for something totally different. Um, which I think is a lot of fun. And, and, and I, it, it's also Etsuko Shiomi, I think is also doing like a really incredible job. Again, we've kind of highlighted the sort of like technical athleticism that she gets a lot more room to sort of like flex that. Whereas the original street fighter is again to its, to its benefit. It's, it's a, it's not a very intensely over choreographed fight. There's not a lot of dance like to it. It's a lot of just blunt, brutal sadism. Whereas here you still get some of that nasty, sort of like a ridiculous gore that pops up, but it's more animated and it's more, you know, again, it's less exploitation like Yakuza movie and it's more cartoony manga mania. And if that's mm-hmm. more your speed, then I think you're going to get it. You, you might like this more. You might get more out of it. Uh, so, you know, so I, and that's just it. So for me, there was elements of it where that w- that change up was a very positive thing, especially with the eccentric and just ridiculous villains that this cigar chomping, just corrupt heroin smuggler just like keeps around his property, literally like pets, like he's a fucking Bond villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, all the unique costuming and fighting styles and weaponry Every few minutes, you're going to see a new ridiculous guy introduced. His name will pop up on screen and he's going to have a memorable fight scene. And, you know, that's something to always credit uh, a martial arts movie for is if it can give you a series of fights that are memorable like that. And this one does it. And despite the fact that it doesn't maintain that sort of meanness and that sort of like X rated quality that the street fighter has for the entire runtime. And a, a lot of it does kind of inelegantly try to mix the sort of like sillier sort of almost like sixties Batman version of a 
Japanese sort of like drug trafficking sort of conspiracy empire thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when when it does eventually hit its um, finale and it gets into blood geysers and her twisting heads around and stabbing the tops of 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 people and it is uh it it's it's it it does work and it's a lot of fun and i would recommend definitely to hear i honestly think i would have had a better experience hearing people react to some of the things that happened in this movie because they are just genuinely unbelievable um when you're watching them and there is a a whiplash effect that i think could be really really rewarding for people to experience with with other people <laughs> yeah yeah i would say like if yeah if you're in the toronto area seeing this with people would be a lot of fun i would def- i would definitely recommend doing that I'm, in, I'm kind of in the same boat i'm in like the strong three territory i do want to watch it without it uh without the the balls cut off you know but uh, this is this is the one time that to be the people streaming service a wonderful resource kind of failed jamie yeah the yeah, one usually, time though otherwise <laughs> usually that's the thing usually they give you the the our version or the x-rated version or whatever it is but this time i guess they just they couldn't get their hands on it i'm not sure what happened but um oddly enough even without all of the the over the top violence that was taken out for me uh it still kind of worked even with her cuz her character is much more honorable in that sense um she she her motivations are a lot more um uh moral and it, and it feels as if uh you know she's 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 doing things for self selfless reasons. So I guess the the lack of like glee in the violence kind of works for her character. Um, although even when I watch a movie that contradicts itself, I do kind of enjoy that too. So you just when Josh, when you were saying stuff like you know, there's certain imbalances. Um, I th- I think I, I could watch this and still that that could still work for me. So I, I really just want to watch it with its six minutes of added X rated craziness. Um, and I think, uh, it, it might get to the four. I also would like to watch it, uh, with, I, I didn't get to watch it really like in a restored sense. It, it, it did very much look like that kind of VHS quality. Uh, yes, kind please of watch the, again, Brendan is fucking playing it, but yeah. also like the new Aero restoration looks incredible. Or just, yeah. And it's a huge so, fucking difference than what was previously available. Like they are doing, you know, magical work over there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, some of, some of the way that, again, this guy, he shoots with a, a very pulpy, colorful you know like the the, the sets are yes. pretty ridiculous and the costuming is pretty ridiculous it's worth seeing and really you know in this new restoration yeah i would love to see all of that pop because i could tell there was a lot on screen that i just wasn't able to really feel it's like it's uh it's vibrant um kind of uh quality that it, yeah it just it it felt like it was lackluster because of the quality i was watching so i just need to get that my hands on the restored version that is not edited to to all hell and I think I would honestly really love this because the martial arts in this uh, scenes in this movie are nonstop. Like this is truly just almost fight sequence after fight sequence with different styles and different characters and um, uh, and different kind of wacky things that happen with each sequence. Every every part has a different thing that you're going to see. Like with uh, one of the just because it popped up on my screen, one of the examples would be when she versus the the Thailand. Um, Oh, people yeah. that kind of look like they have the the Flintstones, the Flintstone King, 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 yeah, wonderful, they, and they have yeah. these stone masks, and and after she defeats each one of them, it kind of shows the mask breaking, and then them showing their face, and it's just a cool stylistic choice that they only have in that sequence because it works for the people that she's facing. So they do they find ways to do that throughout, and I thought that that was really great, and um, especially given the number of fights that are in this, there's a there's a lot of well thought out choreography and, uh, um, Shahomi, although doesn't quite have that, like that presence and that, that animalistic quality that we love with Shiba, she's a, a fantastic martial artist and really precise and really technically skilled. So that's a lot of fun to watch as well. So yeah, a strong three for now, but maybe could get to the four with a rewatch. Yeah. For you, Brandon. Yeah. I would probably give this a three and a half. Um, maybe, maybe a three. I, to be honest, I'm actually a huge fan of the sequel, Sister Street Fighter, Hanging by a Thread, which also came out in 1974. I need to watch that. Give it a watch. Yeah. It's If you thought... Brandon, you should screen that too. I'd come watch well, that. Well, the funny <laughs> thing is, I did screen this years ago uh, when I used to show stuff at Eyesore Cinema in their, their back uh, screening room there. And I mean, the first time I'd seen it, I you know it was late at night with some friends. I there there was quite a few beverages involved, and I forgot <laughs> about a real really uncomfortable scene where 
there's a scene in in like a, a, a villain's lair and for some reason he just has this uh, uh framed like photograph on the wall behind him and it's very clearly like an age girl and and it's you know sort of like a, a sexually oh boy. erotic kind of type of photo and she's like naked and it's like in this scene the whole time just to kind of like fuck with you like i don't yeah. know like have you ever seen like ricky oh the story of ricky where they're in the yeah the, the prison warden's office and he just has all this fucking porn on the shelf behind him it's kind of like <laughs> right. those things but just uh, and like i'd forgotten about the scene i got a few walkouts a couple walkouts that's actually in competition for our next patron voted episode right now one of the the, the, <laughs> the current leading winner is a double feature of the boxers omen and Riccio. oh yeah that, that would be <laughs> oh, yeah that would be quite the uh the double bill of <laughs> gonzo hong kong wild, Good wildness Lord. yeah um yeah I, I think our patron described it as these films will punch your brain out of your skull and vomit demon spiders while strangling you with your own intestines yeah so that was his yeah. pitch because we had we, we we, we, we ask them so, to like just you know pitch what they're you absolutely selling have to that see that was the pitch you so. absolutely have to see the boxers <laughs> omen I, I screened that actually at cinecycle once uh for i did this like chinese black magic thing for halloween one year and it's it if i could describe it like i i don't i don't often like to be like oh it's this movie meets that but it's a fun pairing it's basically kind of like van damme's kickboxer meets jodorowsky's the holy mountain like that's i think that's maybe Damn. the best Whoa, it's somewhere in between go. Those two, but with like just a lot of um, psychedelic black magic stuff. It's it's really quite the odyssey. I, I it's yeah, it's hard to describe, but uh, that's awesome. Heavily recommended. Yeah. Good lord, goddamn. Well, yeah. Any any final thoughts on Sister Street Fighter before we wrap up? Um, I would just say like I I just genuinely do love Etsuko Shiomi's like the contrast of this. You know, she's almost got this like cute, bubbly like you know she smiles. She's got mm-hmm. has these dimples. She's 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 pretty, but she, she's and beautiful, but she's not you know d- sexualized like the you know they're very clear mm-hmm. like if you read about you know the production of this film like yeah they made a very conscious choice to not sexualize this character and this isn't a genre of films that is just so heavily sexualized and some and often like very kind of cringe like unsavory ways and so i think it says a lot that they just allowed her to be completely empowered by just her her physicality her her karate skills and and her you know actually having a, a moral code not just like an evil code of conduct you know like <laughs> and you know and they've got her in this very sort of um you know kind of like humble like buddhist like priest kind of uh, mm-hmm. or like a Buddhist nun kind of uh, robe, which I think is kind of cool. And it changes sometimes between that and, you know, the some of the more like traditional like Chinese uh, outfits with like the Mandarin colors. I like, I, I like her red dragon Yeah, uh, fit that's a really that good look. And, and of course, like in classic uh, Kung Fu fashion, she's wearing all white in the final cl- climax because of course she's going to be completely spattered with just beautiful uh, bl- <laughs> like uh, yeah. guys, <laughs> blood, uh, you know, like Lady Snowblood, uh, you know, fountains of blood uh which is like a classic yeah, this trope. is the movie where if you thought enter the dragon the claw didn't result in enough lady yeah. snow blood geysers yeah. this is the movie you've been looking for it kind of <laughs> it, at times it almost feels like an angela mao movie but then these crazy moments of violence or just like drug use or or kind of almost like like horror elements pop up like mm-hmm. it, it's really referencing a lot of different things and i think like kazuhiko yamaguchi adds like a, a a really like he kind of elevates this material to like yeah this like like you said like manga mania like it's so fun uh, but with like moments of like oh my god like there's just like yeah shocking violence but like and and she's smiling throughout some of it but not in a way that like it's not like she's like enjoying it it's more just kind of like fuck you you know like mm-hmm. it's like kind of just i don't know it's like she's unstoppable you know and and she's she's got this confidence to her and she's you know I'm um, calculated in, in a way the Sunny Shiba is, but with just just this amazing uh, agility and flow, and I just think like yeah, she's really the full package. Like I I can't imagine like imagine like discovering this actress, you know, and and, yeah. and being able to work with her and train her. Like it's I just it's such yeah, it's so amazing to see her in these films. Um, and she's just in so many other great films. I would recommend too. Like if, I don't know if you've ever seen The Great Chase. Uh, I think from seventy five or seventy six, where she plays basically. A sort of like a race car driver slash like secret agent. Um, cool. It's Whoa. Really, really highly recommend that one. And it's full of like cartoonish villains and, and characters and and drugs and, and violence. And every single scene she's appears in, she's just 
in the most amazing look. Like it's so out of this world. Because like, you know, she she doesn't change outfits as much in these Street Fighter films. But check out the Great Chase if you can find it. I it's it's so much fun. Hell yeah! Oh, yeah. I'm definitely I'm adding it right now. Yeah, <laughs> I think those are my final thoughts, guys. I know it was really fun watching these movies with you guys. They they pair off wonderfully and. Uh, it's yeah. it's just kind of great to just see this little world of like the Japan Action Club. Like it, these movies really feel like the playbook for that. And there's a lot of other incredible films that all these filmmakers, writers have, have made. Like you know, at some of the ones with like Hiroyuki Sonata, like Roaring Fire. That's another one written directed by Norofumi Suzuki. Check that one out. It also stars Abdullah the Butcher. Uh, you know, the, the the wrestler who was actually very famous in in Japan. He he wrestled there a lot. So. Uh, and Sunny Cheap is also in that, of course. And yeah, I would check that one out. It's super fun. Yeah, this is uh, this this has been awesome. Um, so that that I think is going to wrap it up for Sister Street Fighter and for this week's episode. That was once again the Street Fighter from 1974 and Sister Street Fighter from 1974. Fifty years ago in Japan, we traveled back to. It's been uh, been a lot of fun doing that with uh, with with you, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, but Brandon, this is the part of the show where if you've uh, got anything to plug while you're here, we usually have you do that. And you obviously you you, you got the big one, but you got anything else? Oh yeah, we got a, another really. I, I've been looking forward to this. One one for a long time because go to brandon screening by the way yes. which is what i was saying yeah, yeah, and i don't remember uh, what was it november friday february 16th at 9 30 p.m at review cinema 16th. uh it's the 16th yes um come check out that film um it's actually my birthday the night before on the or the day before on the 15th so i'll be slightly older at that screening so uh come check it out <laughs> and i've got another really amazing event that i've collabed on with uh nathan boone the uh in-house trailer editor of review cinema he does all those amazing trailers you see uh, on you know reviews uh, socials all the time and um, he also hosts a uh, trailer trash uh, which is um, an amazing event where it's exactly like it sounds it's basically like a, a 90 minute uh, trailer show slash marathon of all your you know it, it's different themes every time uh, he's done stuff like trailer trash uh, uh, I, I'm actually blanking on all the ones he's done before. He did like a sword and sorcery one. He d- he did like a doomsday one, which was all apocalypse film. So there's always like a theme to these trailer trash events. And, and you guys are finally doing a black belt one, right? This is a martial arts one. You called it, Josh. We're doing trailer trash black belt, <laughs> and it's all your you know it's all your favorite martial arts and action movie trailers. And the cool thing is he he has uh, a lot of like amazing like high res scans of actual like 35 millimeter uh, trailer prints. Um, that uh, mm. his friend, uh, I'm spacing on the name, but um, a, a buddy of his uh, has this just incredible collection of um, uh, of trailer reels, and uh, he scans them using this um, pretty innovative uh, method that I'm also not remembering on, but uh, I wish I could give this a plug uh, to his YouTube right now because this would be really useful to know. But there's going to be a lot of cool high-res uh, scans of, of just some amazing trailers ra- ranging from... I don't know, old like Hong Kong Kung Fu stuff to Jackie Chan, Jet Li, Jean-Claude Van Damme. It's all that stuff. And it's uh, March, no, sorry, February 22nd. I think it's a Thursday uh, at 9.30 p.m. So it's a members-only screening, so you have to be a review member, but there's all sorts of different tiers and packages you can get. There's a pretty cheap one for, I think, as low as $30 a year so um it's worth being a member i'm a review member. that's right josh you're you're a, at least a couple times a month yeah you're you're a yeah. proud uh review cinema <laughs> member and you, you make use out of that membership i think because I, I do see you there pretty often so it's true i was just at uh at, at other other brendan's ah uh, uh, yes um, one from the heart one from the heart francis ford coppola yeah, he was which was i had never seen i mean which the new restoration of looked yeah, incredible it was a blast. And it's there was such a journey with that screening because he's been trying to screen it since before the pandemic and originally it was supposed to be i think a 35 millimeter screening but then this new 4k restoration came out so yeah that's great you you caught that i was i was stuck working that night unfortunately no but yes go to brandon screening check out the review they're playing lots of great stuff all the time if you like stuff that we talk about on the show you would like many of the screenings they play there every single month including brandon screening you should go to every single one of brandon screenings the most angry i've ever been was that i wasn't able to go to your rapid fire screening Mm. um I've, I've heard that because I was out yeah. of town. Yeah, I would have. I would have been angry too, Josh. But I'm not angry at you. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just disappointed. Just disappointed. I'm sorry. Just a little but, little uh, dad joke energy for you there <laughs> to cap things off. Uh, this riveting episode. That's of, right. Uh, Sleezoid's podcast. But yeah. 
This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Check out all of that. For our listeners, we're going to be back in one week's time where we are going to be, as Jamie alluded to, uh, talking about an episode that um, one of our longtime patrons, uh, Connor, has been voting for for a long time that has never quite won, but it's finally time to do it. We're going to talk about Melvin Van Peebles's, um, or sorry, Mario Van Peebles's Melvin's son, uh, New Jack uh, City yeah. from 1991. Uh, Incredible Wesley Snipes performance, incredible Ice T performance, incredible Chris Rock performance. I can't wait to talk about that. And yeah. speaking of a uh, cartoon comic booky set design and camera work, uh, leading us perfectly straight into that, which almost looks like a Tim Burton Batman movie at times version of like a drug movie. It's incredible. Um, I, I feel like I, I feel like then, I have to point out this this uh, flub of of uh, Van Peebles' name. It's actually Van Peebles, not Van Peebles is Mario Van Peebles. <sighs> You said Mario Van yeah, Peebles right. is I, Peebles is I I, I that, that, that's because I was saying Peebles is son. Oh, sorry. Okay, I that heard Peebles is you said Peebles is son. That's no, right. And now I seem like a, important. I'm sorry for calling you out on Come that. Come on, now we're gonna and, and, and you know what? Just because Brandon tried to do that, you have to leave it in, Jamie. <laughs> you have to leave that um. in. <laughs> Everyone should know that I'm a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. Wonderful. And we're going to be uh, pairing that, by the way, though, with Juice, directed by Ernest R. Dickerson. Yeah. Oh. Um, our first time going to be talking about the acting chops of uh, Tupac, which I'm excited to do. I've never seen that movie, but I'm very excited. We've talked about um, what, what was Ernest Dickerson's movie that we did? Demon Knight, right? Yeah. Uh, Tales Demon from the Knight. Crypt. Great movie. Speaking once again of fucking animated camera work. God damn. This is, here we go. We're on yeah. a theme right now. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I, um, I don't think I've ever seen it. Uh, any of Tupac's movies, so I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, so that's going to be next week over on the Patreon exclusively, and then in two weeks' time, we're actually still deciding what it is that we are doing. We have a couple guests lined up, but we're not sure who's subbing in for the spot exactly in two weeks, but the three episodes of people who are all deciding are all a lot of fun, and I wish I could tease them all, but some of them are not quite set in stone, but there's some <laughs> lots of fun ones uh, coming on the way, and I and I, I can tease the fact that we are going to be also talking about Roadhouse very soon, oh, wow. because there is a new remake yes. of that coming out, and uh, we obviously have to talk about uh, Roadhouse and more throat tearing, so. Very excited. That, that is, Look forward yeah. uh, that, to that. Awesome, guys. Hell yeah. But that being said, that wraps it up for everything this week. Thanks so much for listening, and keep it sleazy. Keep it sleazy, everybody. Keep it sleazy out there. <laughs>